sets it going. <clears throat> Please rise. Joining us in the piano tonight, Star Spangled Banner is Miss Howard. Thank you, Mrs. Howard. This evening we have um, on our agenda, the first thing we're going to take up is Article 41, then we're going to do the special town meeting. We're only doing 41 beforehand as it relates to the special. Um, <clears throat> are there any town meeting members who have yet to be sworn in? Okay, none. Good. Um, recognize the Board of Chairman, Mr. Greeley. All the business of the meeting is set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session. When the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, May 9, 2012 at 8 p.m. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Any announcements or resolutions? Announcements. Um, Mr. Fisher? I hope you'll find on your chairs uh, my explanation for why I would like to move um, for reconsideration for Article 32. Thank you. Mr. Chapdelaine. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. would like to introduce Ryan Katowski, a uh, citizen and member of Sustainable Arlington, to make a brief announcement about a grant program that the town is uh, eligible for. Good evening. I'm Ryan Kotofsky. I'm a member of Sustainable Arlington, which is part of uh, Vision 2020. And I wanted to let you all know about a, a program that Arlington uh, was just awarded by the state. It's called Solarize Mass. And this program has two parts to it. Uh, one part is it's going to offer discounts to Arlington town residents and businesses to install solar power systems. And the second part of that is a community-led uh, education and outreach program that's going to let as many people know about this and get as many people signed up as possible. And uh, I'm what's known as the Arlington Solar Coach. Um, and I do have a whistle, and I will use it. Um, and um, my job is to coordinate the volunteer effort and to coordinate with the town and coordinate with the Mass Clean Energy Center. And I'm very excited about it, and you'll be hearing a lot more about it uh, in the coming days. There was a press release put out uh, today about it. And if you want to learn more about it, the website is www.arlingtonma.gov energy. And I have a, um, an email account you can send questions to. It's arlingtonsolarcoach at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements or resolutions? Ms. Howard? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jane Howard of Precinct 10. 
and also co-chair of Vision 2020. Here's another Vision 2020 announcement, this time from the Spy Pond Committee. <coughs> the eighth annual Spy Pond Trails Day is this coming Saturday. And you will, if you come to this between 9 and 1 o'clock, uh, you'll be able to join with Appalachian Mountain Club volunteers and others from Arlington sprucing up the trail that goes from Pleasant Street to Lake Street, abutting the Route 2 access road. You'll control invasive plants. You can pick up trash. You can uh, improve the trails and the pond uh, as well for some of the detritus that's the, at the edge. Please bring gloves, a rake, a shovel, pruning uh, shears, wear sturdy clothing and footwear, and perhaps a hat and some sunscreen. This is a community uh, volunteer project. Students at the high school and middle schools who have uh, forms that can be filled out uh, should bring them and we will countersign. Anybody under 12 years of, of age has to come with an adult. And uh, those who are 18 or under have to have parental permission. Uh, we will have snacks. And if you bring your lunch after you're through with your work, you can admire it with all the other people who have come. Thank you. Thank you. Any other um, announcements? All right, our, um, excuse me. Yeah. Precinct 7 still hasn't organized. If they would meet out in the corridor next to the town garden at the break and try and organize, that would be appreciated. Um, that's it for that. Any reports or committees? Mr. Tosti, take three off the table, please. Moved that Article 3 be taken from the table. All in favor? Okay. Yeah. It's all yours. Yep, next one. Good evening. Uh, John Cole, uh, Chair of the Permanent Town Building Committee, uh, here to give our report. I believe it was distributed last Wednesday night. Uh, in the back of the hall. So I'm not going to read through it. I'm going to show you some pictures of what I think are some significant accomplishments that we've made in the last year. station uh, was completed last summer. Uh, it was a complete historic restoration of the exterior. You can see in this photo uh, new copper flashings. The dome has been redone. Even the uh, grasshopper on top of the uh, weather vane has been refurbished, though it doesn't quite show in that picture. Uh, most significantly in terms of the function of the building, uh, the front doors were dropped 18 inches, which required pushing the floor level down, regrading the front, so that we can accommodate um, the newest equipment uh, in the department. So, there you see it from the inside. Uh, these are the day rooms, the kitchen upstairs. These spaces were completely gutted and rebuilt. New exercise room. Nice bunks. Um, before I get to Central, the um, Highland Station uh, has been submitted for LEED Silver certification. That's Leadership in Environmental and Energy Design, which was a goal of the town meeting set some number of years ago. Uh, certification should be in hand momentarily. The, the reviewers are actually past their deadline from the stated time of getting back to us. Central Station uh, is not entirely complete. We've redone the exterior to provide uh, protection from the weather, which was our number one concern. And we had a safety issue. Whoops, can you go back one? The parapets along the top, we had some large stones that were falling off. That's all been resecured, reflashed, and a new roof. So, the building is now tight, and we'll have to wait a few more years till we get funding for the interior. But 
Keep going. You can see the interiors need some help. Uh, it certainly is um, not quite as fine as the Highland. Good. But the, the two projects combined had a budget of $5 million. Uh, we came in about $150,000 under that. Um, we move on now to the community safety building. Last year, we completed phase one of the project, which was a restoration of the plaza between the community safety and the Arlington Housing Authority building. The Housing Authority contributed funds to uh, landscape and put some furniture out on the plaza. And it was recently dedicated to uh, Brian Greeley, who was uh, chairman of the Housing Authority board and a great supporter of this project. We're currently underway with phase two, which is the most difficult piece of the work. Um, last fall, we spent a lot of time and money uh, looking at the envelope of this building to determine the cause of uh, the leaks that have been plaguing this for many years now. Keep going. We hired a, basically a forensic engineering team to go through this building tooth and nail Keep going. Look at all the roofing conditions. Uh, we did extensive water testing. These are rigs that basically spray the facade of the building in about 20 foot square foot segments. So you, you can go over the whole facade and really you know, pinpoint the areas of concern. Uh, that project cost us 85,000. And we are now uh, ready to go with phase 2B, which is the construction work to actually do the repair. Uh, we had our bids come in in April. The low bidder unfortunately withdrew. There was a mistake in his uh, numbers. Uh, one of the other sub-trades uh, was significantly higher than we had anticipated, so we actually rebid that. And given the complexity of the work, the committee decided to invest more in on-site supervision during construction. So we upped our budget considerably for that and basically the forensic engineer will be on site daily during construction because as they open up the building they have to close it up as they go. So if you're not there every day you really can't tell what you're getting. Uh, that project will be before you in the special town meeting under Article 6. It's about $2.9 million. And in subsequent years, we will get on to the interior. Stratton School uh, has been a major success. Uh, as you may recall, phase one was completed last year. That was ADA upgrades for handicap accessibility, a new roof, uh, repairing some masonry. As we came to the end of that project, we were made aware through the, the diligence of um, Adam Chapdelaine and the school department that there was a grant program from the state MSBA for green school repair. So we hustled to get in line for that. We had to increase our scope of work to meet some of the state requirements. And we also had to increase our budget to include new students coming in from the Thompson School for this year. Uh, so the total project cost went from 2.4 million to 2.5 plus or minus. But the upside is through the MSBA and utility reimbursements, uh, the town has, has gotten back over $700,000. So the net savings to the town is $600,000 and change. And I would like to <laughs> in addition to the school department and the town manager's office, I would like to thank the finance committee for their flexibility in helping us get through what was a basically a cash management issue where we had to find money from other accounts to cover the overage while we waited for the reimbursements to come in. And lastly, I'll talk about the Thompson School. There is a Thompson School Building Committee, which includes all members of the Permanent Town Building Committee, plus other appointed members uh, from the community and other town departments. Uh, we've been working diligently 
for over almost two years now. As you may know, last fall the old school was demolished. Uh, final design was completed in February. We received uh, bids in March. The low bid was about $500,000 below our estimate. Uh, so we're feeling pretty good about that at this point because in other school projects, the biggest unknown has been what do we find when we demolish the old building. But that's behind us now, so we're starting from a clean site, 15-month schedule, and we should have kids back in there raring to go uh, fall of 2013. Uh, in light of the... Um, <laughs> This is easy. Uh, <laughs> in light of the good news on the bidding, the, the Thompson School Committee voted uh, no action on Article 7 of the Special Town Meeting, which we had inserted under the possi <coughs> possibility that the bids might come in high. Uh, lastly, I'd like to bring you up to date <clears throat> on some personnel changes. Um, Chief Jefferson has stepped down from the committee now that we're through with the initial phases of the fire stations. Uh, we will welcome him back when we pick up the central again. And uh, <clears throat> I would like everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody in this room should know what a terrific job he's done on behalf of the town. The savings that we made on this project are 100% his doing. <clears throat> Rob Usla has stepped off the committee this year and recently been replaced by Alan Reedy, longtime town meeting member, who we look forward to working with uh, in the coming years. And lastly, I do have a bit of sad news. Um, a few months ago, uh, Bill Shea, who's been the heart and soul of this committee for many years, uh, was diagnosed with cancer. <coughs> uh, he had an operation. Uh, a few months back, he's now uh, in chemotherapy, and I'm sure he would be delighted to hear from anybody in the room who's crossed paths with him over the years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Mr. McKinney. Like this? Ah. Troglodyte here. Maybe I better wave. Should I try it once? Hey! Great! <laughs> um, I, I, I assure you I have not brought my guitar tonight. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, you all for putting up with us, and we now have a full full team. I would like to I would like to introduce to you and uh, and uh, welcome to our committee, uh, Mike Ruggieri. Is Mike you here someplace? Maybe you know you'll show up later. Uh, Carl Wagner, Carl Wagner, he's there so he can call the question, and I have to stop talking. Um, Andy O'Brien. Andy, he can always give us oversight. He's taller. And we need more bark to our bite. Elsie Fiore. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to do a quick reprise. Four years ago, uh, John Leone took a very big step to name me the chairman here. And that year, we actually had our first uh, exhibition at town meet, at, uh, on town day. Uh, we used up most of our, our budget, and fortunately, uh, Diane Mahan did not charge us for taking that beautiful photograph of us with Don, Mr. Donnelly and Mr. Markey. Thank you very much. Um, as we got into business of running a committee, we soon discovered we had a serious problem. Uh, we had done a poll. Uh, everyone was interested, but nobody knew who we should go to, what we should do, who should pay for it. and. Um, we tried to do a, a, a grant for a t-shirt contest. That went no place. We didn't have any money. But our biggest problem was simply this. Who or what was Uncle Sam? Was he a historical figure? Was he a colonial figure? Was he a meat packer? Was he a profiteer? 
uh, was he really there? As I said, um, the Schwamm Mill, the Jason Russell House, the Dallin Museum have sites, property programs, supporters, but they remain obscure in the popular tourist uh, radar. Ironically, Uncle Sam is universally known, but how can an 1812 joke in Troy be added to Arlington's historic sites? In other words, we had a problem where we had nothing but, you know, reputation. It looked like we had a problem here. So on 2.10, we came <clears throat> and we um, began to work on what we thought was the best chance we have. Battle Road, this federal thing was coming up. And we figured that if we could somehow expand the, you might say, the footprint of Uncle Sam in this area, we'd begin to get him known as a colonial figure, aside from simply the fellow in Troy in 1912. So we began to attend these. Uh, I tried to get money for a big poll, but I didn't know how to do it, and of course they turned me down. Uh, thank goodness you guys voted us for $500. And with that, we lurched forward with a a design program for, a, for a, a button and really started to do something. At the same time, ATED was formed as uh, Clarissa Rowe put together a, a committee that was going to help uh, unite us all. And our friend, Mr. Hugh, became, Hugh McCrory became our, our secretary. Well, we worked on this. We went to all these different meetings, and it wasn't easy because, you see, we only had a statue. For a site, you have to have a place where a set of people stand around. And if we had a site, then we'd have something we could point to as people came through. We have a site, not just a statue. And um, it wasn't exactly easy, but the fact was we had the perfect location. Every Battle Road tourist will be driving by the Uncle Sam site. It's our unmanned, inexpensive focal point and a great place for tourist information. So. That year we worked on it, we came back last year, and we had something. We had a logo, <laughs> and <clears throat> no, we didn't win my American Idol with the uh, Uncle Sam song, but I will say it has been copied to a couple of blogs. We are much bigger in Google these days. Another thing which was good for us is we added um, Mike Ruggieri to our, our committee. Mike's uh, company had already had the contract to sort of look after the place, and he provided something we didn't have, which was really hands-on knowledge and, and capacity. Mike's degree is in environmental science, and his landscaping startup had already volunteered to take care of the site. Now we could actually start planning to improve the general site area. Well, we came in, and you saw our plans. We said, let's make something more of this. Let's make it into something bigger. Is uh, Andy Levin here today? He said he might be here, the editor of our fine rag. Well, Mr. Levin, shout out to you, wherever you are. Uh, we, managed to get <laughs> we managed to get a little bit more in the paper as we used to, and people really got sort of excited about what we were doing. Finally, we had a, another a, a town day. We were out in the right place. And this time, we were ready for them. We did another poll. Everybody came up and signed up. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have had a lot of support here, and we enjoyed ourselves immensely. Uh, we had to get back to our two major areas, which was putting a light on the statue and then putting a sign up for tourists to see where they were going. At this point, Carl also joined, and he became part of our team. Uh, we had to slow down, though, because there's going to be major intersection work being done in this year uh, at the Pleasant Street Mass Avenue intersection, so we're holding back, but we are part of that. Okay, now we're coming up to this year. Uh, this year, we had success. In fact, we were, had the expanded definition of Uncle Sam is in the federal proposal. We are a site and not a statue. Um, Mike went forward with some very good engineering drawings to come up with a plan for the Mystic River, Associ Mystic River Watershed Association's rain garden project. We nearly got the rain garden behind Uncle Sam, but we didn't quite do it. He, he did m meet up with some great environmentalists. We did a great job, and I want to thank again Wayne uh, Huchard, uh, Jane um, Chunard, who helped us with the final plans. Well, and this year, we finally got on the parade. Thank you. We uh, finally got on the parade. We went from top to bottom, and um, we enjoyed it thoroughly. I have to admit that um, I think that uh, Hugh's daughter was probably the most popular person in the parade, but we gave out a lot of buttons, and we had a very good time. So we come back, and we're working on, you know, uh, just about to go. We're going to do our signage program, Andy, and, and then we discover we've got clashing articles. What to do? What to do? Clashing articles. Us and them. Well, we sort of got together and thought about this, and we realized 
Um, there's ways to do this, and you know, uh, these two committees had never worked together before. We may attract different supporters for different reasons, but we share a goal of making our town more attractive and welcoming visitors, tourists, businesses, and ourselves. This is where we actually share the load now. And I said, when I was 17, I had some hair. But I'll always remember one thing Mr. Frost said, freedom is moving easily in harness. And so we're actually going to team up with these guys. We're going to uh, hitch up with ATED. We're going to plan together. We're going to pull together. We're going to represent. We're going to get working with the, with, with the plans. And we're finally going to pull together for this tourism project and make it work for all of us. After all, we, we want something that's going to be con conforming to everything. We want the very best. And in fact, we did pull off more or less what we were trying to do. Because by now, Sam Wilson is no longer a forgotten statue or an eponymous icon. He has his place among our historic attractions. We're all under the big tent. We're all pulling together. And I would like to remind you that although Sam Wilson himself may have been born in, in 1763, Uncle Sam did not appear until 1812, of course. So this is his 200th birthday. OK. Now, I don't have a guitar, but we know the words. Mm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Uncle Sam. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McKinney. Any other reports or committees? Seeing none, Mr. Tosti, please. He promised not to sing if we gave him the $1,500, but anyway. <laughs> I move Article 3 be, t uh, be uh, put back on the table. All in favor of putting 3 on the table, please say yes. yes. Opposed? Article 3 is on the table. Um, Article 41 is before us. Mr. Foskett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charlie Foskett, Precinct 8, uh, and also Chairman of the Capital Planning Committee. Um, a couple of, uh, of um, administrative issues. Um, we're dealing with uh, Article 41 before the special town meeting because some of the material in Article 41 and some of the material in the special town meeting are in common, so we'll only have to go through this once. And um, I just would like to remind you that what you're actually voting on is in the Green uh, Finance Committee uh, recommended vote. That's what's before you. Even the vote, even though the vote and the discussion is is contained in the uh, report of the Capital Planning Committee, which is a blue report that was distributed uh, several weeks ago. First of all, please allow me to describe a little bit about what the Capital Planning uh, Committee does and what the process is. Some of you who uh, may be new to the town meeting might not know this, but every year in the late summer, early fall, we begin meeting and we meet until um, roughly. January or February. And during this period, um, we collect and prioritize capital requests from each department in the town and eventually uh, review and recommend and finally advocate uh, their funding. We recommend a capital budget and a five-year capital plan to the town manager. This budget actually belongs, is, is the town manager's budget, and ultimately recommend it to you, the town meeting. It's you who make the final decision. The five-year plan is a tool that allows the department managers to plan their needs over time and it sets and manages expectations. It also alerts town meeting and the citizens to major expenditures that lie ahead and where possible reduces surprise. It also gives town meeting and the public the time to reflect on the appropriate use of taxpayers money well in advance and it demonstrates gravitas and respect for the taxpayer. I'd like to introduce uh, members of the uh, Capital Planning Committee, and not all of them are here tonight, but uh, a, moderator, a moderator appointee, Steve Andrew, is on the committee. Um, Adam Chapdelaine, the town manager, has served on the committee for the last three years. Uh, Paul Olson, who is the vice chairman, is the town treasurer designee. Uh, Ruth Lewis, a town comptroller, is a very dedicated and long-serving member. 
Uh, Tony Lionetta is the secretary and a designee of the moderator. Diane Johnson, the school committee's, uh, the school superintendent's designee. Uh, Brian Rarig, a long-term town meeting member, joined the committee this year, and we're delighted to have him on board. Barbara Thornton is a moderator's appointee, a citizen serving on the capital planning committee. And I'd like to especially note that uh, John Fitzmaurice, who recently retired, has been serving uh, 19 years on the committee, and uh, we'd like to thank him for his leadership and his contribution over those years. So uh, just a couple of comments. Our, our, co our uh, community has long benefited from, for benefited from political traditions, institutions, and infrastructure that has been passed on to us by predecessors. We share in our ancestors' obligation to transfer equitably to the generations that follow the same or greater value that we've received. In the latter part of the 20th century, during which I've been around here and many of you have been around here, we enjoyed the schools, the town hall, public buildings, the library, roads, and highways, developed by the greatest generation of the mid-20th of the mid -20th century and their forebearers. Last year, uh, a favorable override vote and town management and labor's adaptation, or adoption rather, of the GIC health insurance uh, program created two fiscal building blocks that allowed Arlington's continuation of transferring a strong social legacy. In budgeting this year and for future years, we owe special thanks to Clarissa Rowe and her override committee and to the town management and labor leadership for implementing the GIC. We have strong tools to plan the future. In the last several decades, we have passed and we have continued as town meeting to support an intact municipal fabric. The town has operated with prudence and with probity. Our bond rating is AAA. Our debt as you will notice in the capital report, is less than one-fifth of the state legislated limit. We've rebuilt and expanded Robbins Library. We've renovated the town hall and the town yard facilities. We've renovated the Addison Middle School, and with the completion of the Thompson next year, we will have renovated or completely rebuilt all seven, seven elementary schools. The town's in the middle of a 40-year program to renew and replace its water and sewer infrastructure that was first developed 150 years ago. As uh, John uh, noted to you a, a few minutes ago, the, the, um, fire state, the Highland Fire Station was completely renovated from top to bottom and stem to stern, and a few years prior, we, re we rebuilt the Park Circle Fire Station. During this entire period, the public rolling stock from school buses to snow plows and the fire department's quint ladder pumper have been maintained, replaced, and upgraded, as has the town's information technology base and other equipment. As, as John pointed out, more needs to be done. The central fire station is scheduled for planning next year and interior reconstruction the year after that. Community safety is in the midst of a multi-year upgrade. Future efforts needed on the Stratton School and the Arlington High School, which was built in 1914 and was renovated and last upgraded in 1980, was part of the 1991 school infrastructure study, but it hasn't been addressed in 32 years. Our Miniman Regional Vocations, Vocational High School is also in need of renovation, and this will become a subject uh, in the, over the next uh, months and years. And of equal importance, um, our highways and byways, our walkways, are in need of intense, intensified attention. Capital Planning Committee is recommending a, a request by the Director of Planning and Community Development to create a comprehensive master plan that will help shape the town's future. Town meetings, careful evaluation of capital needs and its continued support, continued support of the town management's five-year capital planning process is really a critical part of our evolution as a town and is a critical element of the intergenerational transfer of our communal heritage. Now, uh, we, to some degree, you've already heard about the community safety building tonight, but uh, this is one project that I want to draw to your attention. It actually spans Article 41 and, and uh, this Article uh, 6 of the special town meeting. In the appropriation, the actual appropriation for the funding is in Article 6 of the special town meeting, but the debt service for this is carried in the five-year capital plan, which is presented to you as part of, the, uh, part of Article 41. The reason why uh, the, the uh, appropriation is in the special town meeting is that the special town meeting will end hopefully tonight or maybe uh, next, next night. 
And uh, within 10 days after the end of town meeting, what, what gets passed there becomes uh, effective. And this allows the Permanent Town Building Committee to go out, bid the projects, and get the work started immediately so that the work on this exterior envelope of the building can be completed before the bad weather comes in in the fall. So this is really a, a cost-saving effort on the part of the, special, of the uh, Permanent Town Building Committee. Um, the central fire station is also uh, in, in, in between a multi-year uh, rebuilding program and um, as was pointed out earlier, uh, the Permanent Town Building Committee uh, completed uh, the project for the, both the Highland Station and the Central Fire Station on time and under budget. And um, I wanted to make uh, one point about the, about the um, Central Fire Station. It is um, uh, going into planning next year, but there, there has been new legislation and uh, the, the Permanent Town Building Committee is investigating this right now but there may be um, some requirements for new internal structures that are uh, uh, seismic proof essentially uh, for the um, central fire station, which may force us to reconsider that expenditure. We don't have the complete knowledge right now, and at the moment uh, the building is still planned for renovation in, and planning in 2014 and 2015. Uh, we, we proposed last year that we would bring before you a maintenance committee. Uh, the Capital Planning uh, Committee proposed uh, that maintenance committee. The Board of Selectmen in the interim has adopted, adopted it, so there's no reason for us to continue to recommend that article. And I would especially like to thank the town manager and the superintendent, uh, the uh, chief financial officer of the school department and the Permanent Town Building Committee for their great work on the Stratton School and the Green Grant, which uh, saved us uh, all that money. So uh, I'd like to now wrap up within my 10 minutes. Boy, it's going to be hard when it's seven minutes. Um, and, and ask respectfully for your support of Article 41 in the, town, in the regular town meeting, which is before you now, and for Article 6 in the special town meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Streifeld. Mark Streitfeld, Precinct 20. Um, I have what is probably a quick question in section two, item 11, it says water and sewer rehabilitation. And then item number 13 says water system rehabilitation. What's your, what's your question, sir? Um, how do those relate to articles 42 and 43, which seem to be authorizing borrowing for the same thing with different amounts. Do you see what he's referring to, Mr. Foskett? In, is this on page 13? Yeah, on, on page 13. Yes. Right. Okay. So on page 13, these are, are, um, these are, these are basically authorizations that the um, town meeting is being asked to make that are funded by uh, external projects. They don't affect the, uh, tax, the tax rate or, or uh, directly the non-exempt financial plan. But this authorizes, uh, is a sort of an endorsement by the town meeting that the town can go ahead and undertake these projects. In the case of the water and sewer, the funding is from um, the water and sewer system. And how does that differ from the appropriation under Article 42 and the right to borrow and 43 and the right to borrow? That's a specific authorization to borrow those funds from the um, MWRA. So, so they're, bar oh, oh, okay, one comes from the MWRA, the other one comes well, from the town. Well, the, um, the, the borrowing is from the MWRA, but it's paid for out of the water and sewer enterprise fund which is considered, the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund is considered, how do I express this, it's considered not part of the tax base. In other words, it's funded externally by water fees. And, and that's true of both items, both in Articles uh, 41 and 42 and 43? Uh, yes. I, yes. 
so therefore the total amount is on the order of uh, 2.2 million for uh, water system, uh, I'm sorry, for sewer system rehabilitation? Um, 850, yes, yeah, that's correct. Okay, okay, thank you. I was wondering how they were related. I guess they're not. Seems to be separate funding, thank you. Uh, Mr. Harrington? Mr. Jameson? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. I um, have a couple questions uh, for Mr. Foskett. Um, first, I want to, um, I think, I, I don't know what you did last year or this year, but you uh, added back something that had been missing for a couple years, which is the historical perspective and the forward-looking perspective, and I really appreciate that for giving us a, a we, better summary of. Uh, we try to please. Of, of where we're, what? We try to please. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you sounded like Mr. Leone there for a second. Nope. <clears throat> on, on page. Five. Um, we have on the top the recapitulation of the five percent, um, and and at the bottom there's a table that had the pro forma budget at 114 million. Is that I, I'm I'm confused because the finance committee last page or next to last page has a total revenue of 124. Yes. Um, so how did we get to 114? That's a good point. Uh, the, the Finance Committee budget uh, includes all uh, exempt and non-exempt uh, funds that we have to vote. So, for example, if you look on uh, Table uh, 2 of the um, Capital Planning Report on page 4, there are some, uh, some numbers in there, uh, uh, such as the... Um, the MWRA loan payments and also the um, the uh, the non-exempt um, I'm sorry the exempt uh, funding the exempt principal and exempt interest those are, those are part of our total town budget and uh, on which we pay taxes but they are not part of the non-exempt budget and the and the charts that you're referring to on so page, page the tables three and four on page five are only the non-exempt budget. In other words, the budget that is subject to Proposition Two and a Half. Okay, so you back out the, the you back, exempt. You back out the exempt that's and any exempt or and, enterprise okay. funds, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, my my next uh, um, point is um, we've discussed this before in front of in front of the meeting. Um, when we have an override, um, our process is to take in all the revenues from the override. And as, as everyone, most people here are aware, and Mr. Fosk is eminently aware, uh, we save some of that in the override stabilization fund. So those are revenues that we appropriate into the stabilization fund. And then when it comes time to use them, we appropriate them out again. So um, I've expressed my concern again, and I, I, I'm asking again whether now that we're in that phase again where we're putting money away, are those funds being counted now as revenue, or will they be counted when we actually uh, reappropriate them out of the stabilization fund and use them in the future or both times they're they're um, they're being counted as they come out of the stabilization fund okay I believe so the so the pro forma budget um, should have also backed out the any appropriations into the stabilization fund I can't be 100 percent positive well if that. not this year maybe we can check that for next year okay um, we heard a report from the uh, town manager from um, the DOR um, regarding their concern about offsets. And at the top of uh, page, I believe, five, there's, we have quite a number of offsets there, um, uh, totaling over a million dollars when we come up to the 5% calculation. Um, I have discussed in, previously in front of this meeting the Audison. That's because we, we paid for that out of, out of uh, regular tax dollars versus tax dollars from a debt exclusion like we do for most of the schools. Um, I note that, that, that rather than being put in the DPW budget, that the re road reconstruction work has been uh, placed as an offset here and in the capital plan. Um, I have a question about that. Is, is the um, intention to continue that only for three to five years? Um, 
So when the plan ends, does that, does that back out, or is that something in there for perpetuity? In perpetuity? Well, <clears throat> I, I'm not sure how we'll deal with it after five years. Maybe I won't even be here after five years. I don't know. Uh, but um, <laughs> We all hope you will be, Mr. Foster. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, basically, um, when the override um, campaign was underway last year, the town committed that if the override was voted, and I'm usually loosely the term town here, um, that $400,000 of the override funds would be spent on roadways. Right. So what we've done is we've increased the capital budget for the, um, for the um, public, public works department by that $400,000, and we've offset the, f essentially it also increases the 5% limit by that $400,000 because that money is flowing from the, specifically from the override into the uh, public works department capital expenditures. Okay. Um, so for those of you who are, have, don't, haven't added up the numbers, um, in the capital plan, there's $1.25 billion in roadway reconstruction funds now. I'll have a, few, a, a question for the uh, director of DPW regarding highway um, uh, allocations when we get to that budget. Um, uh, so the next question is, um, we voted um, or revoted the antenna funds and allocation to the parks department. Uh, to recreation uh, and park uh, rehabilitation. Um, and when I first joined the meeting, um, there were several forward-looking uh, capital plan um, budgets that had, um, I would say, substantially more um, funds being spent on a park rehabilitation, including the park upon which I am a direct abutter, Robbins Farm Park, the second phase of that. Um, and so I'm, cons I, I'm, I'm concerned that, that if you look at the capital plan, um, there is a, a, only a marginal amount being spent on park rehabilitation compared to those past uh, um, uh, proposal, pro forma looking forward proposals. Um, so I understand that we're under, this, is a, this part of the budget is under a lot of stress because of the um, heavy duty building issues that we have to address uh, appropriately. But I'm concerned that the um, park rehabilitation is going to be uh, unfortunately, potentially limited only by the funds available from the antenna. Uh, can I uh, fund? Um, is that the intent of the, of the Capital Planning Committee? Uh, or it's not or only not? not the intent, but it's not true. Okay. The, um, if you look at the uh, Recreation Department in the Capital Budget, uh, at the bottom of page 3 of 5 in Exhibit 2, you will see that over the five years, um, there's approximately a total of $2.4 million being allocated to uh, parks and recreation to various okay. projects. So which page is this? Because I have recreation on page two of three in exhibit six. Well, um, look on page three, the five-year, is this the right? Yeah, five-year capital plan. On, I'm sorry, on uh, page, exhibit two, page three of five. Exhibit two. Yes, madam. Okay. Her suggestion is that they refer to which report they're looking at, okay. the green uh, one or the, the blue we're one? We're looking at the blue uh, report of the Capital Planning Committee. In the back of the report, there are a number of exhibits. We're looking at Exhibit 2, which is the five-year capital plan. And on page 3 of Exhibit 2, page 3 of 5, at the bottom, you see recreation, parks, and playgrounds, and there's a list of okay. projects. I'm sorry, Mr. Foskett, I, I stand corrected. I, I was looking at page two of three of exhibit six, where there is a different list of things, and, the, and the, that, what that is actually is the payments we're going to be making out. That's the okay. uh, Reclaiming my time. No, no such thing. Reclaiming my time. Um, so, so this is an important part of what we do to keep this town running. Um, I took some time um, because th there are many things we do beyond the non-exempt portion of the budget, which is what we vote on here. Um, and uh, just, just my, my back of the envelope uh, calculation is that the total budget expenditures, whether the revolving grants, uh, capital uh, loans we take in, money we borrow, for the town of Arlington, this is basically an all-in, including the, all the enterprise funds, is about $152 million a year. And, and of that, all-in, all sources, about 22 and a half of that is capital. 
So, so uh, Mr. Foskett is, 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 is facing a daunting challenge here to try to keep all these, all, to, to juggle all these balls. Um, my comment about that is that um, we, we uh, perhaps unnecessarily, perhaps necessarily, uh, restrict our options to some regard with regards to Prop 2.5 and, and other funds that the state might provide us. So looking for, and, and that includes that we do not use debt exclusions for the rehabilitation of our public safety and fire stations. Uh, we do for the schools. Um, and we do not use, take advantage of the Community Preservation Act. So um, going forward, as we, as we get towards halfway through the current plan and looking to the future, I hope that, that those things will be considered as part of the options so that we can extend our current plan even farther. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Mr. Carmen. Mr. Kaplan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mark Kepline, Precinct 7. I just had a couple of questions on some of the items. Um, the roadway projects uh, that are above and beyond the Chapter 90 funds, uh, what are they for exactly? What projects are they? Maybe the Public Works Director can uh, respond to that. Mr. Rodemaker? Is that, sorry, Mr. Yep. Yeah, it's, it seems like a half million dollars a year that comes from the state, and then there's almost that much from the town. Uh, thank you, Mike Brown, for the public works. The additional funds simply allows us to perform more roadway uh, improvements. Currently, or not currently, previously, we had approximately $850,000 a year. Um, the additional 400000 850 on average, got us about two miles of rehabbed roadway, two to two and a half, and the additional 400,000 allows us another mile or so, and is more in line with the kind of funding we need to keep our roads at, the, um, at a condition as good or better than we currently have. Uh, are there any particular streets that residents might look forward to seeing improved? Uh, the list of this year's uh, roadway improvements was placed on the website uh, either la end of last week, I believe, or, 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 or this week. Um, we, we go off of a program that's been established. Uh, a study was done of all the public roadways in town, ranking their condition and giving them a certain, a certain rating. And we use that document to help us plan uh, roadway improvements. Uh, I, off the top of my head, I don't know the whole list of streets. I, I have them at my, at my seat if anyone is interested to look at them, but they are available on the website for review. The town, okay. The town's website. All right. I guess that's good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bill Kaplan. Uh, Bill Kaplan. Bill Kaplan, Precinct Six. Um, I just. Uh, I just. Sorry about that. I just have a question on uh, the comprehensive master plan. I guess I'm. What exactly is is are we getting with the Mount comprehensive master plan and who? Who is, is this consultants' fees, or uh, what, where's the money exactly going for the comprehensive master plan? Mm -hmm. Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, yes, it's likely that consultants would be involved in this. A comprehensive master plan is something that um, Arlington hasn't undertaken since before the Beatles were known in this country. Um, I didn't think we had ever done one, but I did find that we did a comprehensive master plan in Arlington in 1962, and before that, we did one in 1926. Uh, it's time for Arlington to do another one because the first step is to establish goals and policies to have a shared sense of where the town is going rather than reacting on an ad hoc basis to individual uh, land decisions and external uh, occurrences within Arlington and on our borders. I, I could go into greater detail, but oh I'd yeah, so this is I mean this is planned for future capital expenditures or what? Um, what exactly? A lot is? of it has to do with land use. There's 
usually nine elements, but communities have flexibility on the elements that are included. There's always an analysis of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats uh, for land use development, economic development, transportation, public facilities and infrastructure. Uh, we have been reacting to opportunities for a grant here or uh, reacting to uh, a threat of a development there. A comprehensive long-range plan takes time, but it's worth it because then for a, a, a period of 10 years or more, there's a shared sense of where we agreed we were going to go and how we were going to prepare ourselves to react to some of these external and internal occurrences. Uh, so um, when you say where we agreed to go, who, who's agreeing? Uh, I mean, is this something that this does this plan be, involve the whole community? It really had better. Uh, okay. It involves a very comprehensive public participation process which we expect will kick off on October 17th. So I hope all of you will mark your calendars for October 17th to plan to be in this room for a facilitated, structured conversation to jumpstart our goal and policy conversation for right. the master plan. And then the, I guess the last question is when, how long is the plan likely to take? When, uh... It's likely to take two years. Okay, all right, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Rocha. Michelle DeRocher, Precinct 19. I have a question on uh, item 32 in the first section, a microfilm reader for the treasurer's office, $20,000. Um, can someone explain um, how that reader is used, whether there are current data sources needed for the office that require a new reader, or is this legacy data that needs to be accessed that isn't planned for digitization? It's, it's planned for digitization, uh, the, but the, 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 um, there's been a lot of data already put on micro, microfiche that has to be read, it has to be eventually digitized, and the whole question of uh, archival, the treatment of archival data is pretty critical for the town. And um, candidly, um, you know, we're not up to speed on it. In other words, we're not, we're not current with uh, our obligations to uh, take the, the appropriate care of this uh, data, so we're trying to, trying to catch up on that. Okay. Um, just one suggestion, given that it is an antiquated format and lots of organizations are getting out of the business, there might be a, a good deal on a reader that might save us some money. Thanks. We'll look at that. Um, second question is um, related to an upcoming Warren article related to concussion prevention uh, for football players in the schools, and I wondered if that had come before the Capital Planning Committee for any discussion? Uh, yes, yes it has. We had somewhat extensive discussion about it. Um, Mr. Harrington and uh, some colleagues of his uh, came to a Capital Planning Committee meeting last, either September or October. Um, and uh, we, we spoke about it with them. Uh, they d described a lot of what they were uh, considering. But uh, we didn't have a request before us. And I think, as I mentioned in my presentation on the capital budget, we review the requests from department managers. It's very important that um, capital requests arise from departments that are going to own the equipment and manage it and use it and, uh, you know, apply the resource appropriately. So um, uh, Barbara Thornton, one of the members of the committee, uh, gathered together the appropriate uh, documentation, uh, talked to Mr. Harrington, and we actually created uh, with Mr. Harrington a request for his equipment, which then I think, I'm not sure if it was Mr. Harrington or Barbara, but somebody brought it to the school department. And uh, the school department uh, reviewed it, and I'm, this is now hearsay, okay. Um, my understanding is that they determined that they had adequate plans and resources to treat this subject within the school department budget. So the school department never made a request to the capital planning committee for uh, any such equipment. 
if they had, I'm not sure that we would have approved it or even considered it capital, but as a matter of fact, they did not make that request. My understanding is, and in fact, my knowledge is I've seen the budget that, that this is being handled by the school department. The school committee has discussed the issue at length, and there are new line items in the school department budget that address the issue. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Leonard. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. Uh, in the Capital Planning Committee's handout booklet, six pages from the back to make it easier, halfway down the page. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a typo that uh, I, I mentioned last year. Uh, it covers in the Recreation Department that $525,000 was appropriated in 2011 for the park playground and the tennis court. I think I may be mistaken that that might be a typo because it was just for the completion of the tennis court, which I would like to point out that Mr. Joseph Connolly in Parks and Recreation did a tremendous job out there. Uh, again, could I have that corrected? Is can, that just Can you read the page number at the bottom for me? Ex Exhibit five, page two of two, but it's easier if you go six pages from the back of the book. Wellington Park and Playground and Tennis Court? Right. And what's in, what are your... I believe that money was only set aside for the tennis court, if I'm not mistaken. The playground is still yet to be done. Yeah, you're correct. So we need to take the playground out of that. So okay. administratively, we're going to delete the words playground and. Now, my second question, if I may, Mr. Foskett, is if you go one more page to the back. And you go 80% of the way down the page to recreation. I was under the understanding last year that the playground was going to be in the 2012 budget, but as you see here, money has been appropriated for the playground in 2017. Is that the way that it's going to fly in the future? Let me see. Um, so you're looking at page, exhibit six, page two of three? Yes, sir. Down in the recreation section, I believe in last year's capital planning, the playground was going to be done under 2012, even though it wasn't cast in cement. But now it's saying that we're appropriating $6,000 for the year 2017 to finish the playground. And I'm well, just well first, of all, first of all, if I can sort of redirect your attention to, um, to exhibit two, and I'll check and tell you exactly um, these, these are just projections, though. We're not appropriating this money at all. These are just okay. what he's planning on doing. Yes, I'm just curious, Mr. Moderator, because last year's book yes. had okay, so the Yes, okay, so you're, you are correct. If you look on, on um, Exhibit 2, page 3 of 5, uh, we have in the current plan forecast uh, Wellington Playground improvements for $427,624 in 2017. Could you give me that figure again, please? Uh, Four hundred and twenty-seven thousand six hundred twenty-four dollars. It's rather precise, uh, but that must be the quote. Um, that's scheduled for 2017, fiscal year 2017. Then what is the six thousand dollar? That's the forecast of debt service. That's one. Okay. That's one okay. half of one year's interest on the first for the first year. Okay, so the year has roughly been changed from 2012 to 2017. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, we'll, we'll make that one administrative change that you referenced. <coughs> the 
gentleman next to Mr. McCorry. Len Carden, Precinct 20. Um, the Florence Ave tot lot, which is uh, in the budget for next year, is the primary playground used for the Dallin School. And uh, I don't know who the correct person to answer the question, Mr. Moderator, but I was wondering if the construction of that can be scheduled around the school year so that the kids can still have some place to play. Um, either Mr. Foskett or is it Mr. Cole or whoever's going to build it. Hi, uh, Joe Conley, Director of Recreation. Um, it is. Because it is on parkland adjacent to a school, primarily the primary users will certainly be Dallin School, but it's a public playground open to the public. Um, the schedule will be laid out the best we can so that, yes, the kids will get the benefit of it during the school year. That won't be, it won't be able to be finished completely in the summertime. There definitely will be some overlap, but they, we will make sure that we schedule as best we can around the school year. Great, thank you. Um, and for the other second question, um, IT is moving more towards a software as a service model. And I see there's still in the out years a lot of software purchases being contemplated. And I'm just wondering if the Capital Planning Committee or the Finance Committee as a whole has thought about these, this issue with software moving out of the capital budget, possibly to the operating budget. Um, have, have they considered this, and are there any adjustments that need to, to be made to our process? Uh, Mr. Foskett or and or Mr. Good? I think Mr. Good can. Yeah, Mr. Good? I, I think in the, uh, the, the capital, oh, David Good, Chief Technology Officer. Uh, the uh, capital line items for uh, software uh, mainly cover a uh, normalization of some of our uh, uh, larger applications that are in existence uh, and it's sort of make up licensing uh, to get them uh, uh, to their uh, legal state and uh, some large purchases for uh, add-ons to student information systems. Now software as a service, uh, we are a Google Apps environment on the uh, school side. We uh, do use uh, a variety of other external sources, and, and potentially in the next couple of years, we will probably have some reduction there uh, on that side. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just a request um, for the Capital Planning Committee. The, the road reconstruction that was in the override, I mean, it was, it was discussed by that very you know, selective five-year planning committee um, that sort of came up with the override package that went before the voters. And, I, and I, certainly we committed to doing that for three years, but I think beyond the three years, I, I think the CPC should carefully balance those needs against the other capital needs in the town. That wasn't part of the process. We just sort of, they just sort of came up with 400,000 because the roads were something that you know, potentially would sell well and were, and were a dire need in town. But I think beyond the three years that we've committed to, it'd be great if they took another, if you could take another look at whether that should go through years four and five and beyond. Uh, and then finally, um, I, I, I support the idea of the master plan, um, but I'm a little bit curious that that's coming out of the capital budget, and maybe it's just a, a shell game, but I, I would, I, I'm just wondering of the thought behind that type of planning document. Um, I, I don't know when the town's done other types of studies, whether we've had that as a capital asset or not. Uh, we, we have. Uh, we ha Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, we have had uh, uh, prior studies of, uh, for example, the needs of the school department, um, and various studies over the years uh, come out of the capital budget. And in fact, in chap chapter um, 44, section 7 of the Mass General Laws, there's even a section for plans and analyses that can be bonded. So uh, I, it's, it's legitimate. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Mr. Lavetti. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Chris Loretti, Precinct 7. I have just a few questions. I think I heard Mr. Foskett mention the relationship between Article 6 of the Special Town Meeting and the capital budget. I'm curious whether there is any relationship between Article 8 of the Special Town Meeting. This is the $200,000 appropriation 
uh, for the Energy Conservation Fund and the, um, uh, and the capital budget. There isn't. So, so that's to say that $200,000 is not included in this blue it's book, not correct? Okay. Thank you. Um, just a couple other questions, uh, and I'm looking at Exhibit 2 because the print's big enough for me to read it. Um, on page 105, under um, about two-thirds of the way down, under Health and Human Services, there's $20,000 for the hybrid vehicle replacement. I'm wondering if anyone knows uh, one, how old that vehicle is, and two, how many miles it might have on it. Hmm. Who drives it? Ah. Here we go, put the driver. Thank you, Christine Connolly, Director of Health and Human Services. The vehicle is assigned to an inspector in my office, a health inspector. There are about 30,000 miles on that vehicle, and it's a 2001, I believe. There are only 30,000 miles? Mm -hmm. Is there some reason it needs replacement with so few miles on it? The vehicle is one of the first generation Prius models, costing us currently a lot of money each year to replace batteries and, and various pieces within the vehicle. The, the vehicle costs, maintenance costs are extremely high. Has the town already had to replace the batteries? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, just one more question, Mr. Moderator, on let's see, page uh, three, three of five of Exhibit 2, about halfway down, um, there's $225,000 for the high school parking lot culvert for fiscal 13 and 14. Uh, um, I'm wondering if somebody could explain to me what that is. Um, maybe Mr. Rademacher it's, yeah. it's, could explain it. It's, uh, it's on the road going into the high school. It's under the road. It's Mill Brook. Ms. Is, is it, is it the Millbrook culvert? I think so. Can you enlighten us? Uh, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. You're referring to the high school, the culvert replacement in 2013. There is a, uh, that's the Millbrook culvert that is underneath the parking lot of the high school. I thought that had already been replaced once, no? Uh, a portion of that culvert was replaced during the, um, the environmental work done behind the high school, but they stopped that replacement at the edge of the, um, the subject site area of the uh, limit of the environmental concern, and there was a portion that was left un unreplaced. Yes. So will this, um, will the work be done all in one year, or will some be done in each of two years? It's, 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 the funding is spread out over two years. The first year we would use some of those funds for design and save the rest to use the next year for complete reconstruction. Yes, okay. Thank you. That concludes my questions. Thank you. Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Carl Wagner, Precinct 11. I move that we terminate debate on the question and all associated matters. Second. Motion to terminate debate. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion it is a two-third vote. All right, we have before us Article 41, the recommended vote of the Capital Planning Committee as contained in the green booklet. Um, some of this requires bonding, specifically Article Subsection 3, I believe, um, or 4. Well, it's in there. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? In my opinion, it is a two-third vote. Um, Madam Clerk, do you certify that there are two-thirds of the members present and voting in the positive? Yes. Thank you. And that brings us to the special. She said yes. I said that. I said, you, Madam Clerk, do you certify there are two-thirds members present voting in the positive? And she said yes. 85. Um, okay. Mr. Tosti, um, where did my agenda go? Oh, darn it. Yeah, got one. Um, I'm going to declare that the annual town meeting is in recess. Uh, declare that we're now taking up the special town meeting. I recognize the chairman of the board of selectmen, Mr. Greeley. Sorry, Mr. Tosti. I'm sure they'd rather hear from him. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mr. Moderator, thank you, sir. It is requested that the members of the Board of Selectmen, elected officials of town, town manager, department heads of town, staff, superintendent, schools and staff, committees, commissions and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and Superintendent, members of the General Court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted on by this meeting, representatives of interested parties of Article I and representatives of the news media, be permitted to sit within the special town meeting in closure. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk, do you certify, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was properly called by the Board of Selectmen and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? Yes. Yes, she does. Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if although the business of the meeting is set forth in the warrant for the special town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, May 9, 2012, at 8 p.m. All, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Um, are there any reports of committees on the special? Mr. Tosti. I move that the report of the Finance Committee that is contained in the uh, Green Book uh, of the annual town meeting be received. All in favor of receiving that report? So opposed, it is received. Any other reports of committees? Notice Ms. Tossi lay one upon the table. Can we put one up back on the table? We just took it off. We have to, took the report, and now we have to put one back on the table. Did they have a report? Oh. Do you guys have a report? Yeah, okay, here we go. Sorry. Oh, look at a new book. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Move that the uh, report of the Board of Selectmen be, be received. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's the same book. All right. All, all right. It is received. Move that Article 1 be laid upon the table. Okay, that brings us to Article 2. Aye. 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 Oh, you want to vote? Okay. Yes. All in favor of putting it back on the table? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Sorry, just rushing things along. All right, that brings us to Article 2. Amendment to the 2012 budget. We have the recommended vote of the FinCom um, to reduce the... 2012 health insurance budgets. Mr. Tost, are you going to speak to this? No, both of the articles, Article 2 and Article 3, deal with fiscal 2012, in other words, the current fiscal year. They involve the negotiations that took place over the health insurance and joining the GIC uh, and the savings of it. So you can see we're reducing the health insurance budget in this fiscal year by $2,140,000, and then we are allocating funds, as you see, $145,000 uh, to the school budget for their collective bargaining, $1,383,681 to the override stabilization fund uh, for, for uh, future um, appropriation, and $130,000, um, a separate $130,000. Uh, that will go for reimbursing the school for the Stratton School renovation. Now that comes from a different source. Last year, the uh, legislature said that if there is surplus funds left at the end of fiscal 2011 from the state budget, they would give us back the money they took away from us uh, in, uh, for this fiscal year. Uh, that happened, there was a surplus in the state budget, uh, therefore, we received money under Chapter 142 of the Acts of 2011, along with the ability to use that. So that's a separate fund, and we're allocating 130000 there to be used to reimburse the school budget for Stratton's uh, renovation project, where they forwarded some of their own money uh, to get the Stratton school renovation project going until we received the state money. And then uh, Article 3, um, we, we, uh, just to give you quickly, this is the uh, voting to approve the collective bargaining agreements and also transferring monies, again, that from the, that 2140 into Article 3. 
So again, it all deals with fiscal 2012. Thank you. Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Not Precinct 12. So um, we're reducing the budget from last year by roughly 2.1 million. And in Article 2 of the special, uh, I see where 1.675 of that, or actually the 130 you said doesn't count. That came from a different source. Is that correct, Mr. Toski? That's correct. Okay, so it's actually more like uh, uh, 1.5 and change. And then you, it wasn't clear to me, I, I guess my question is, so the first one reduces the budget. Where did the funds come for the second one that had $900,000 or something you were talking about? The same source. We're reducing the health insurance budget yes. of this year Yes. by 2140 Yes. We're allocating 145 to the school a million three eighty three to the override stabilization fund. Yes. One hundred and seven and then under Article three, one hundred and seventy nine thousand eight eighty two uh, to fund this collective bargaining and two hundred and ninety thousand for future collective bargaining for the unions that did not settle. Now if you add those four pieces together, they do not come to two million one forty. The balance will just go to free cash. Okay, thank you. That was that's where I had my confusion. Thank you. Anyone else wish to discuss this article? Seeing none, all in favor of the recommended vote, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Was there a no? I'm going to clear it a two-third vote. Oh, excuse me. I don't think I heard a no back there, so it's a unanimous vote. Okay, that disposes of Article 2. We now have Article 3. Um, Mr. Tosti has explained this under Article 2. Does anyone wish to speak to this? Sir. Len Cardin, Precinct 20. I just have a question about the wording that the additional 290000 for future collective bargaining um, cannot be expended without the future vote of town meeting. Um, are we able to delegate that to the town manager so we don't have to come back for a special town meeting? Mr. Tosti, I don't think we can. Yeah, my understanding is that any collective bargaining, um, the funding of any collective bargaining must come back to town meeting. We're the appropriating authority. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I think that would be delegating way too much authority to, to the town manager. He has to come back to us uh, to approve the contract and the funding. And that would have to be at a special town meeting. A special or a regular? Or, or the regular. Annual. If it's for fiscal 2012. I think we could probably do it at a regular town meeting. Uh, sometimes it's done at a special within the regular like we're doing now. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to discuss the article? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote, and I so declare it. That brings, that closes Article 3, brings us to Article 4 of the special, Appropriation Minuteman. Uh, FinCom has a recommended vote. Mr. Tosti. Last summer, early, uh, in fact, uh, I think it was in June, the uh, town of Lexington hired a new uh, building inspector, some hot shot. <laughs> and they said, well, let's go take a look at Minuteman. And so they walked into Minuteman. Now, for those of you who have been there, yeah. one whole area is consists of shops. Uh, it could be uh, the only shop I ever was in was in, high, was in junior high school. But you know, uh, plumbing, electrical, all the different shops. And they're all separated, not by walls, but by partitions. And these partitions included wood. And immediately, the, the building inspector, um, I shouldn't be sarcastic about them, but the building inspector basically said, that's unacceptable. All these have got to be ripped out and, and put in uh, with, with metal partitions. Uh, and Minuteman did not have this money in its budget uh, available, so they had to get the work done. They had to get the work done before the school was going to open in September or close down in, in effect. 
Uh, so they did the work, uh, it had to get done, and then allocated it, and so this is our approval of our share. So this is approximately uh, 30, 32%, the 128,996. Uh, and we are recommending that that money come from that same uh, chapter 142, which is the rebate we sort of got back from the state. Uh, so it's coming from that same source of funds. Uh, so it's work that had to get done uh, or the school literally could not reopen uh, and, and this is the only way they could pay for it within their budget is to come back to the town meetings and, and ask for their permission uh, on that. Thank you. Okay. Anyone wish to speak to this article? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Unanimous vote and I so declare it. That closes Article 4, brings us to Article 5 of the Special Town Meeting. Appropriation Stabilization Fund. FinCom recommends no action. All in favor of no action, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? It's no action vote. That closes 5 and brings us to 6. Uh, FinCom will report, my little piece of paper says. Do we have a report Mr. in our book? Mr. Foskett? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Charles Foskett, okay. Precinct 8. Uh, this is the article that we referred to uh, during the discussion of the Capital Planning Committee's report in Article 41. It's $2,240,000 to be appropriated for Phase 2 of the Community Safety Building Rehabilitation that uh, was also addressed by John Cole, the Chairman of the Permanent Town Building Committee. Uh, I don't think, um, I think we discussed all of the issues and uh, you know why we have it in the special town meeting package so we recommend uh, favorable action. Thank you. Anyone wish to discuss this? Oh. Mrs. Stamps? Susan Stamps, Precinct 3. So I'm uh, only been in town a couple of years so I don't know all the buildings, but um, most of the public buildings in, in Arlington are pretty nice. They're old, they're, grace, they're graceful, um, they're really special. The community safety building is a big square monolith on Mystic Street. And I'm just wondering, and I'm not gonna say anything more than that because I don't wanna say bad things about our buildings, but um, I understand that this, this is a big renovation. It was built in 1983. Um, and of course, there are mostly safety concerns and integrity of the building. But I'm just wondering if, if there's any money or thought put into finding some way to beautify this building. <laughs> Mr. Cole, can we make it pretty? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> I mean, that building was of its time. Uh, to do anything major to change the appearance, I think, would be certainly beyond the scope of the current project. Okay. Anyone else who should discuss the article? Seeing none, we have the recommended vote, $2,240,000. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Okay. It's a... Uh, Positive vote. And okay, that's all it requires. Okay. Does it require a two third vote? Okay. I didn't see bonding under there, so I didn't notice that. All right. Um, Madam Clerk, do you declare that there are 85 members voting in the positive? Yes. Yes. Thank you. To declare two third vote. All right, it's 9 30. You want to take a break now or try and go through the rest? Okay, we'll take our break, come back in 10 minutes.
Seats. Please take your seats. We have, bef <clears throat> we have before us Article 7. Rec We have before us to recommend a vote for no action, but a fin calm. All in favor, recommend no action. Article 7, please say yes. yes. Opposed? No action. Disposal of Article 7. Article 8, we have before us a recommended vote of the Finance Committee for Energy Conservation Funds, $200,000. Mr. Chapdelaine is going to speak to this. Um, Adam Chaplin, town manager. Actually, I'd like to ask permission for Ryan Katowski, uh, town resident and sustainable Arlington member, to give a presentation on this. Yep. Um, th Mr. Tosti, did you want to speak to it first because it's your article? No. No, okay. Sir? I got you, Chris. So good evening again. I'm going to take off my um, solar coach hat and put on uh, an energy conservation hat and tell you a little bit about work that we've been doing in town uh, on reducing the town's energy consumption and energy bills. Do I have, um, do I get control? Um, so again, I'm Ryan Katowski. I'm a member of Sustainable Arlington, and um, I sit on the town's energy working group. And uh, we've been doing energy efficiency in uh, town for um, more than a decade now. And we've done a pretty good job uh, at it overall. Uh, these are dollars that we invest in technology primarily, and also um, energy management systems that cut energy use in town and then pay themselves back uh, through the energy savings. And uh, these investments actually work very hard for the town. Um, in addition to the savings that, uh, that they uh, give us, uh, the money that we spend um, is leveraged by utility rebates, um, uh, Recovery uh, Act funding, Green Communities Grant funding, and uh, block grants. Uh, the projects typically pay back in under five years and often in under three years. And uh, just my rough uh, conservative estimates is that since we've been doing this, we've saved uh, over a million dollars cumulatively uh, in these projects. And as I like to say, we don't, uh, we don't measure these savings in dollars. We can actually measure them in things like uh, teacher salaries. Uh, so it's that significant. And uh, some examples are the, um, uh, the traffic signals in town, uh, our LED. Uh, we did that uh, about a decade ago, cut energy use by about 90% in traffic signals. Uh, street lights, lighting in schools, new boilers, switching from oil to gas uh, in, in various buildings, and the like. And we've gone from what I would call an ad hoc process to a, a bit of a more structured process through the Energy Working Group, which has um, volunteers and uh, town staff uh, that look at these opportunities. So all that's really good, uh, what we've done so far. Uh, but what we really need to do is uh, take this up to the next level. Uh, so where are we right now? Uh, we've, done a lot of, uh, we've done a lot of the easy projects, uh, what we call the low-hanging fruit. Uh, the town is committed to a 20% energy reduction over five years. We're about halfway through that uh, time frame. That's one of the things that we agreed to when we became a green community under the state's green communities program. Uh, and we have a lot of support for that uh, within the town, but we are limited by town, uh, town human resources and we've been, what I would say, mostly reactive to these energy savings opportunities and not proactive. In order for us to get to that 20% goal and continue to find uh, the savings where they exist in town buildings, 
Uh, we need to become more proactive. And uh, we need a source of funds where we can react quickly to opportunities. So if the utility comes to us and, and they're, they're looking to spend uh, their rebate dollars, uh, they may come to us with proposals for projects and uh, we need to be able to uh, address those quickly. Uh, and these projects are typically quite attractive for the town. So, so what do we need? Uh, we need a source of readily available funds so that we can react quickly to these energy efficiency project opportunities. These funds would supplement but not replace department funds or the capital planning process. And we're asking for uh, an initial amount of $200,000 that would come from supplemental local aid. This money would be administered by the town manager with advice from the energy working group. And this fund would also allow for the deposit of energy rebates for reinvestment in future projects. And these rebates are designed uh, to encourage energy savings and we want to be able to use that money to basically recycle it back into more energy savings. I want to give you a couple of examples of projects uh, to show you how this fund would help us. Uh, the first example is a project that was completed in late 2010 at the high school. We installed wireless lighting, and sensor, lighting sensors and controls. The project uh, cost was about $50,000. After the rebate, uh, the net cost to the town was about $27,000 and was going to save nearly $11,000 a year in electricity. So that's a 2.6 year, what we call simple payback. Uh, you could also call it a screaming deal. Uh, it's, a, it's a very attractive project. Uh, to make this project work, uh, the town had to, uh, I would say, scrounge uh, from six different budgets to find the necessary money. And uh, we were, uh, I would say, days away from not having this project happen because we were having difficulty finding where that money was going to come from. In the end, we did do it, and we did get it done. And now we're reaping the benefits of that, of that project. Another project uh, that was presented to us last year actually did not happen. This was a project to install what are known as variable speed drives uh, on uh, hot water pumps. I think it was about 10 pumps in six buildings. And what these drives do is they basically control the amount of electricity being used by motors that circulate hot water when demand for heat is low. Uh, this is about a $90,000 project, a $36,000 rebate, so a net cost to the town of a little over $50,000. And it was going to save a little over $25,000 a year in electricity, so this has a 2.1 year simple payback. Unfortunately, we didn't have, this, we didn't have the money to make this project happen uh, this fiscal year, so uh, we were unable to do it. We're still hoping to do this project. Um, but um, it's not certain that we'll be able to do that um, uh, without that $52,000. So again, the idea is to have uh, uh, some money available to us where we can react quickly um, and make these projects happen when they're presented to us. Uh, a couple things to consider in, in sort of how we would decide uh, what projects to do and not to do. Uh, these are a couple of criteria that we would use, and these are actually criteria that we have been using uh, first of all, we, 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 we only look at projects where they're being recommended through some sort of study, a report, an energy audit uh, done by third-party professionals. So we're getting uh, good advice on the technical viability and the economics of these projects. And initially, we would uh, like to target projects that have paybacks of five years or less. Obviously, if the, the measure you were putting in had, a, had, a, uh, had an equipment life that was less than five years, we would adjust that. But most of these projects are fairly long-lived. Uh, the equipment lasts uh, uh, 10 years or more. Uh, so we think that's a, a good, a good uh, threshold uh, for considering the economics of these projects. And with that, um, I will wrap it up and just say thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Loretti. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Loretti, Precinct 7. Um, let me begin by saying I, I support energy conservation, but I'll be voting against this article, and I'd, I'd like to explain why. Um, if I asked Mr. Foskett earlier whether this article was in, or the $200,000 was included in the capital budget, and he, he replied that it was not. 
if you look at the capital budget, you know, there is um, funding listed very specifically for various line items down to levels of a few thousand dollars. Here we're being asked to appropriate $200,000, but we don't know what for. And I, I, th I have a real problem with that. I think before we appropriate money, particularly large sums, there has to g the, the spending has to be properly vetted through the normal processes. Um, now, I appreciate the town manager's enthusiasm in working on these types of projects, but it seems to me that he's uh, perhaps in his kind of honeymoon phase with the town, and there's, what we're doing is giving him, if not a blank check, at least a, a check for $200,000 to go on a shopping spree. And what I would prefer is that over the next year that the town manager working with the, the energy group comes back with specific proposals and that those proposals are vetted through the normal process through the capital planning committee and town meeting votes on them then with, instead of voting on them right now without knowing exactly what we're voting on. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I was wondering if, if I could ask Mr. Foskett what, what his opinion of this is since he, he said earlier these, this funding has not been approved through the capital planning committee. Do you have an opinion, Mr. Foskett? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles, <coughs> Charles Foskett, Precinct 8, also a member of the Finance Committee. And um, I would uh, note that the vote of the Finance Committee was 15 to 1. And um, <coughs> I was not in favor of this article for many of the reasons that uh, Mr. Loretti has outlined here, and we had, uh, I had no prior knowledge of his um, feelings about this. Basically, uh, I think that uh, there is no difference between an energy project and a project for a fire truck, or a project for a police car, or a new building, or an improvement to a school building, or, or whatever. They, these uh, are general town funds. Uh, all the other department managers have to uh, compete and uh, participate, participate in a planning process. They have to learn to uh, delay gratification and wait until they can get the funds to do what they want. Uh, during the conversation um, at the Finance Committee when uh, the town manager presented this idea, uh, much was made of the thought that these um, energy rebate programs have a time element to them. And if the, if the investment isn't made quickly, there's no opportunity to get the utilities rebate or whatever in the future. Uh, subsequent to that, um, I looked at the state programs and I looked at the programs of a number of utilities, not only in Massachusetts, but uh, throughout, the, throughout the United States. And virtually all of these programs extended for years and years and years. So I, I don't sense that this is not a process that couldn't take place uh, through a normal capital planning uh, procedure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The, Mr. Moderator, the other reason I'm, I'm voting against it relates to my day job. I work as, as an environmental consultant, and from time to time you, um, we'll team with other, other companies. And one of the companies I've teamed with in the past is a firm that does uh, energy management. And one of the prime services that they offer is going into companies and helping them determine how to save energy. But, they, but this service that they offer, and they've been very successful doing this, is going in and helping companies save money after they've already spent hundreds of thousands to mil millions of dollars on energy management programs and then not realize the savings. This is a really tricky area, and particularly as you get, as you get away from the low-hanging fruit that Mr. Kotovsky mentioned. I think we need to get this right from the beginning, and I think, as I said before, we need to have this vetted. There, there are a lot of really smart people in town on energy efficiency measures, measures including Mr. Kotovsky, but I'd like to see the specific investments um, vetted much more, made public, vetted much more broadly before we appropriate these funds. So I hope you'll join me in voting no, but not because we don't think these are good ideas, but because they need better review and more complete re review before time, town meeting gives away this money. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dice. <clears throat> Mr. 
John Dice, uh, Precinct 13, and a member of the Finance Committee. Um, I have a question. I know that for residences that, uh, that might include, or uh, as an addition to their uh, dwelling, might have a solar electric system uh, placed on the roof of the house, that uh, there's a pretty good deal to sell the electricity that you create back to the utility. And I was wondering if the same sort of deal holds for uh, buildings in a town. Does, could someone answer that question for me or a deal like that? Is it financially uh, attractive to have solar facilities on Ms. the roofs? Mr. Chapman, Ch is gonna tell us. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Um, my understanding is, in, in general terms, yes, the, the, generally the, the rooftops of many municipal facilities are good locations for a power purchasing agreement, whereby a third party will come in, install panels, leasing the space on the roof, and sell the ele uh, electricity back to the town at a, at a very good rate, and if any surplus energy is created, uh, sending that to the grid. Uh, we've done some very initial looking at various rooftops uh, in town to see whether or not we would be viable for that. I can't tell you anything further than that right now because I, I don't have any further information, but we are in the, in the early stages of looking at whether or not Arlington would be a good fit for such a program. Well, we certainly have a lot of acreage on, on the roofs of the town, right, and many of it is flat and an ideal maybe location for uh, solar panels. So I, I guess I would strongly urge that we might look at, at such a, a method of uh, alleviating town budgets. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Stickman. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. First thing I want, I want to say is that the new street lights are wonderful, at least from my perspective. They, they put them in on Mystic Street, and that night, all of a sudden, all that orange glow that was coming off the old street lights disappeared. The quality of light is so much better. The light pollution has been reduced. Uh, I'm just wondering if, what the timeline is for the conversion of the rest of the town to the new lights. It's getting a little far afield. That would be under well, a different it, it budget, was, but he'll give you a quick answer on that. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Within the capital budget, there was an appropriation to retrofit the, the remaining parts of town with the LED lights, and that should start uh, at the be near the beginning of the fiscal year, uh, July, August, September, based on bidding. Okay, and, and the second thing I want to say is I'm, I'm looking at these numbers that, that, that are before us. Uh, for an expenditure of uh, $52,000, today we save $25,000 in the first year. So every day that we don't move on something like that, uh, we're, we're shipping money to NSTAR that at times certain from a point of ma actually making the installation, we're now two years away from eliminating that e energy expenditure. So if you've got something like this that could have a significant reduction in energy costs the town, it makes sense to do this as quickly as possible. And to go and say, well, it, it, it's a toy, it, it, you know, let's, let's go to the five-year capital planning process, I mean, it could be two or three years down the road when we actually go and install these wonderful VSDs and all we've succeeded doing is shipping more money to NSTAR. So given that logic, I, I think it makes sense to make this appropriation and let them do what they can to make us more energy efficient. I urge a yes vote. The one way in the back. Yeah, I can't really see who you are. Janice Broadman, Precinct 15. I think that this um, article actually does something very similar. I mean, I usually, uh, I find myself usually in agreement with Chris. So this is unusual that I find myself on the other side, but I think it does very much what, it, what we do when we say, okay, we're gonna buy two fire engines. I mean, we don't vote on what model and whether we're gonna get used one or not. And, you know, we say, okay, we need fire engines, let's do it, and you know, we'll leave it to them to decide which, which model to get, et cetera. Um, 
I think this is a good appropriation. My, what I would like to see, what I would have liked to see, and I, I don't know if it's too late, is to know what the IR, you know, what's the internal rate of, rate of return that you use as a threshold? Not just the best scenarios, but what's the internal rate of return? And what um, opportunity cost percentage, you know, what, what you assume in terms of the percentage that you use for opportun opportunity costs for those funds? But if we could have that, uh, I mean, it seems in a, in a bit like a no-brainer. I mean, if we can save $25,000 a year on something that we invest $50,000 in, it, it certainly seems to make sense. But we just don't know what your thresholds are. So if we could know that, that would be really helpful. And if you have that now, that would also be very helpful. Thank you. Mr. C oh. Okay. Adam Chapsley, town manager. Uh, I guess to, to reiterate the, some of the points that Ryan Katowski made, the, the main metric we use when we've looked at projects in the past is is a simple payback analysis in terms of how many municipal fiscal years it would take to pay um, to pay down the cost of the project based on the energy savings projected. So we haven't looked at internal rates of return or any other issues you mentioned, but we we do look at that payback analysis and we focused on keeping that payback as Ryan mentioned, under five years, depend, but depending on the life of the, of the asset or the, the project we're looking at. Thank you. Mr. Carmen? Ms. LaCourt? Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. Um, I would like to inquire of either the town manager or um, a member of the energy working group, if possible. When was the last time that we spoke to any ESCOs about seeing whether or not any energy, the ESCOs are the things that Chris was talking about, about whether or not we would be a good bet for any of them? I know we did so about five years ago, and um, most of the ESCOs turned us down because they felt like we'd already done so many changes that they couldn't make any money selling us the service. Uh, what's an ESCO? Adam Chaps Lane, town manager. And ESCO is a, a basically an energy service company that comes in and does a, what's called a performance contracting, mm -hmm. where they'd say, we'll, we'll do XYZ project uh, and guarantee that you'll save this amount and you'll pay back, you'll pay us with your savings over the course of 5, 10, 15, 20 years. The answer to the question is yes. The town went through um, a long uh, RFP process as part of a regional group through the Metropolitan mm -hmm. Area Planning Council over this past fall into the, um, into the winter looking at ESCOs. Uh, this regional group, a uh, 12-member group that Arlington was a part of, selected Amoresco as an ESCO to potentially mm -hmm. work with. Right now, the energy working group is still has those same concerns that you just mentioned, that Arlington has done quite a large amount of, uh, of energy efficiency work and taken a lot of that low-hanging fruit that an ESCO would use to subsidize larger cost uh, pieces of a project that they would do. However, we're we, we are considering uh, moving forward into uh, their um, investment audit stage whereby they would tell us whether or not we would be a good fit. So that's something we're currently working on. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and Chris Labretti mentioned that he works as an environmental consultant and I know we have several others in the audience, but I just thought since I was the person who got Ryan appointed to the energy working group, that you might indulge the meeting, Mr. Moderator, and allow Ryan to very briefly run through his uh, credentials as an energy, as a as an environmental consultant. I, I don't think we really need to do that. He's well, I would just he's respected. He he gave us his presentation. I, I just that this is what he does for a living was my point. I appreciate. So that. we are working with an energy an, an environmental consultant already, and we are receiving his services as a volunteer position with the town, and I don't think we would be able to do better by paying a professional, is my opinion. Um, we appreciate his work. Thank you. So obviously I'm in support of this article. I would like to uh, reemphasize several things that have been said here. I'd like to reemphasize um, Mr. Schlickman's position about the ability to move nimbly. This is one of the things that's very hard for us to do in government sometimes. Most of the time it's good for you, the voters and the taxpayers, that we can't move too nimbly because it means that we are transparent and we have a public process and so on and so forth. But I think given the amount of money here, which is less money than we spend on, say, 
a playground project which you vote for and then it gets spent and you don't know the details of how it's spent or a tennis court renovation where the same thing happens that what we're doing is we're saying as long as they're qualifying energy savings investment projects here is a pot of money you can use to move quickly when an opportunity arises i'm sure there are times when we'll get another bite at the apple but I think Mr. Schlickman's point is well taken. We won't get another bite at the apple of the savings we will have made in the months that go by while we're processing through the capital planning process. Obviously, the Energy Working Group should put into the capital planning process anything that they feel they have a length of time on, and certainly very large and expensive projects, but I don't have trouble with this particular um, piece of work. So I hope you will support the article. Um, if it was a million dollars they were asking for, I wouldn't be supporting it any more than Mr. Foskett is. That would seem like too much to me. But given the amount of money, I think it's worth it for what we'll get back. Thank you. Thank you. Andy O'Brien. <coughs> Andy O'Brien, Precinct 16. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Katowski, um, the on the project that we uh, uh, missed out on because we couldn't get the uh, project um, together in time. Roughly, how long how long did we need to react on a project? And, and also, on the project that we uh, did get on time, how long did that take? Sir, can you answer that question? Um, Ryan Katowski, on the uh, centers and controls project at the high school, I mean, I think it literally sat for months uh, while we were figuring out how we were going to do it. And it came down to, um, I, think, I think we had to the end of a calendar year to get it done. And it was mid-December, literally, that we were finishing it. So that one, I mean, that was sort of you know, by the skin of our teeth, as the saying goes. The other project, I'm really not sure about the overall timeline, I have to say. Mr. Chapdelaine knows. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. In regards to the variable speed drive project, uh, we, NSTAR reached out to us telling us that they wanted us to do the project by the end of calendar year 2011 in order to receive the rebates that were highlighted on the screen. And I, I want to confirm uh, the dates of the emails, but I believe we were given about six to eight months in order to come up with the funding to execute the project. So it was less than a year? So we had to react. And, 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 and that for that particular project, as NSTAR portrayed it to us, yes, it was less than a year. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. This gentleman here behind Ms. Bean. Yep, you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jeremy Marin, Precinct 16. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, I heard a lot of grumbling when the list was originally referred to as a shopping list. A lot of people got upset with that. I actually think that might be a good way to describe this because when I think about a shopping list for the town, I would like to put on that list more policemen, more teachers, more firefighters, a lot of other things that would really be good to have as part of the shopping list. I think a lot of people in this room would like to have those on their shopping list as well. What we have here is an opportunity to put those things on the shopping list, to be able to get more teachers, not in four years, but in two years. Get more police, not in five years, but in three years. To, by moving forward quickly, we're able to get more services, more staff, more opportunities that much quicker. I urge you to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Adam? Yeah? name I can't remember I'm Debbie Edelstein from precinct 9 I have a question about money um, earlier tonight we voted on two expenditures from the rebate local aid rebate um, however I never heard a number about how big that rebate was and how much might be left after the two votes we already did and whether or not there are any restrictions on that in terms of time or project. Who told us about the rebate? Uh, Mr. F Mr. Foskett did. The oh. two, several of the votes here were the supplemental rebates, local aid rebates. Oh. 
One for uh, Stratton and one for Minuteman Tech. Do you follow what she's asking, Mr. Foskett? The excess surplus? The, yeah, the surplus. Yeah. Supplemental unrestricted government aid that we, that we appropriated 130000 for to reimburse Stratton and just a hair under 129000 for Minuteman Tech. It was a pool of rebated money from the state. Yeah, Mr. The, the request for this is from the same pool of money, and I was wondering how big that pool is. I believe it's about four, uh, 465000 and change. All right, we spent, uh, we've spent uh, 260000 tonight. Right. And then okay. when you spend another 200, that'll be 460, and probably a few dollars will go into free cash. Okay, and, what, and was it required to be spent in 2011? Fiscal I'm sorry? Two, is it required to be spent in the current fiscal year? Well, the, the money is available. Right. Uh, any, money available uh, any money remaining by June 30th, the uh, controller will close out, and it will be used to calculate free cash for next year. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jamison. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, this is classified as a fund. Is there a reason it was not classified as a revolving fund? I don't think it's going to get reimbursed. Uh, no, I think he's being referring because it's cons energy conservation fund. I don't think it's going to, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Tosti or Mr. Chapdelaine, but a revolving fund gets money back into it, right? We going to get money back into this? Yeah, that's the next article. Oh, is there the wrong article? I'm sorry, I'm just doing them one at a time here. We're going to make a fund, and then what's the next one? I'm sorry. Establish an account for energy rebates. You know, article 8 is just an appropriation uh, to be expended under the town manager. Under no Article 9 establishes a fund, but we're not on 9, we're still on 8. Yes, and, but the title of the article is Conservation Fund. So this is just, <coughs> I'm sorry, I, can, I, I must have not understood what we're doing here. Because I thought, when it, the presentation was given, it sounded to me like we were going to have a fund. This is not a fund, this is well, just a What we're discussing is the vote under Article 8. Which is just a direct appropriation. That's we're, correct. We're giving the Energy Working Group 200000 to go out and do all these energy saving missions through That's Mr. Tost. Tost? Okay, yeah. thank you, Mr. Toski. Um, so the reason to do this is the alternative approach that, that we could take if we wanted to be timely in response is call a special town meeting, which I think a special town meeting might cost us half of any savings that, of the ones that have been examined just to call them. Um, do we anticipate um, doing this again? You going to come back, Mr. Chapdelaine? Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. N not to jump to um, article number nine, but article number nine would establish a fund that could accept energy rebates that could then be spent on further energy uh, projects. I would not anticipate coming back and asking for a, a further seeding of any energy conservation fund. Uh, but with, uh, in the future, with potential modeling, if there was a, or if, if state law allowed for a different way to capture energy savings uh, within a given fiscal year that could be real, uh, reallocated to energy efficiency projects, then potentially then I might come, come back, but I, I, I wouldn't imagine asking for another amount of seed money separate from any other process. Further to my confusion that Mr. Toski um, uh, attempted to uh, remedy, um, is there a report from the Board of Selectmen on Article 9 that is positive? There is. And is that a revolving fund we're going to do in Article 9? No, it's, it's a special fund. A special um, we'll, fund created, created through a home rule petition. Pardon me? It would be create, a special fund created through a home rule petition. Let's oh, okay. And, and that, that's required because versus? Because a, revo a revolving fund by law accepts fees generated by a program. So you would pay a fee for a program being implemented. So it doesn't really fit revolving fund law. And okay. currently under uh, Department of Revenue uh, policy, Energy rebates need to go into the general fund, so they couldn't go into a revolving and, and fund. And that's partially because these, the rebates, et cetera, are going to be deposited. And it would be accrued to this account as, in re if, if Article Nine was successful. Well, and, and, and they could nine. come. They could come from a variety of sources. I'm just trying but, to be efficient correct. here, Mr. Moderator. Yeah. Um, but let's finish one. Um, 
So as long as we get a report back from this, um, I'm, uh, I'm on board with this, and I assume we will get a report. Um, as, in regards to uh, Mr. Dice's suggestions, uh, I hope we will be, I believe there are solar ESCOs, which might put the, stuff on, the solar panels on tops of our schools and buildings uh, at li little or no cost to us, and we would gain the benefit. Um, at least I've seen those in the press. Um, and then we're talking about the savings here. Beyond the rebates, we talk about the savings. Now, when we have savings in street lighting, we see a difference in the budget that we vote here. When the recycling committee and you all out there recycle more and we reduce our solid tip fee costs, you see that in the DPW budget that we pay less for tip fees at the incineration plant. I would hope that the $20,000 or whatever I saw up there, that we'll see changes in the budgets that are the benefits from this, and if not, reasons uh, why those funds are retained by those departments. Um, so on a trial basis, um, with the report coming forward, under those caveats, I'll be voting uh, for this. Thank you. Mr. Veritlu? Ms. Stamps? Mr. Howard? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Peter Howard, Precinct 10. Um, I'd like to ask the town manager if he'd be willing to, if this town meeting were to pass this article, if he would be willing to consider only projects that uh, had a short timeline, quick response requirement, and put other ones that, where there's plenty of time through the usual process. Mr. Chapdelaine? Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Yes, I, I would be willing to do that. Seems like a good idea to me. Mm -hmm. Mr. Berger? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Eric Berger, Precinct uh, 6. I am going to vote against this. I agree with Mr. Loretti about Article 6. And though I support energy conservation, it makes a lot of sense. I also support town meeting knowing what it is spending the money for. This point was made when we got into Article 37 on revolving funds, and there were a list of expenditures, but we didn't know what they were for. And we, uh, we agreed that night to give Mr. Chapter Lane uh, no. approval for that, but we asked him if he would please um, uh, next year consider coming back with more specificity, and he said he, he took that under advisement. And this request for $200,000 is too vague. I mean, we have no idea what it's being spent on. And I'm not saying it isn't going to be spent wisely, but we should know that. Now, Ms. LaCourt made a point about, well, we vote for other things, other things that are vague, like the playground. Well, I think we should be moving in the direction to know. And, and it's a matter of respect for town meeting. And it doesn't, I don't think it takes a great deal of additional work to let us know what the specific proposal is for. That's all we're asking. I'm sure we probably would agree with it. But right now, we have no idea. And several points were made here to make some suggestions about the expenditures. So I, I urge us to vote against this, not because we're against energy conservation, but because as town meeting we want to know what it is you're asking us to support. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Twosty. Al. <laughs> As you can see, if you look at both Article 8 and Article 9, the Finance Committee is split. We voted 15 to 1 on one issue and then reversed and voted 15 to 1 against the other issue. And I think there's several different elements here. Um, one is that, agreeing with, with Mr. Foskett, is that we want to see as much as possible work through the channels, including the, including the capital budget. On the other hand, things become available that you need to go for fairly quickly. Uh, if this was a city council, it would be a very big city council, but if it was a city council, they meet every week or every two weeks, or they're a continuous body. So if there's something comes up, you can go right back to them uh, and ask for an appropriation. We're a town meeting. We meet for uh, several weeks in May, and occasionally, you know, a special town meeting in the fall. 
And as good as town meeting is, it's not terribly flexible so often. Um, so I think, um, and in this case, you know, conserva uh, conservation or energy producing savings is different from a fire truck. A fire truck you just pay out. It costs money over a long period of time. If you get the right energy conservation project comes up and you're able to grab the funding, that's something that's going to pay for itself in you know, two years, five years, six years, whatever. It's actually going to save us money. So I think the Finance Committee felt that the direction uh, that the town manager wanted to go to have some money available to take advantage of things that came up w was a good idea. However, and again, this is going over to the next article, uh, which I'll probably just repeat some of the same things, is that we're really not comfortable creating another fund. I mentioned the same thing to you with all the revolving funds that get set up. So we're willing, we wanted to give the town manager the chance to go after monies that are available, after rebates, and save the town money. That should be a direction we always give him. On the other hand, want to come up with a different mechanism, perhaps, for, um, uh, for being able to get the rebates and keeping them and then spending for more energy conservation projects. Uh, and so we'd like him to come back, again, I'm going into nine, we'd like him to come back, see how the original 200,000 and give a different solution under Article 9. Per perhaps it involves uh, utilizing the Capital Budget Committee as an approval. In other words, you know, before you can spend this money, you're going to get their approval. Something like that could be done so it, it stays within the normal process. Um, this is sort of a long answer involving two different questions, but that's how the Finance Committee felt. Let's go ahead with this. We can save some money. Uh, we're always trying to figure out ways to save some money, but let's not create a different fund until we see how the first 200000 was spent, uh, how much money it saved, how much rebates came in, get some more experience, and then if we need to create a separate fund that moves quicker than the Capital Budget Committee and the town meeting, then maybe we can add some other features to it uh, to get other parts of our pro process involved. So I do recommend favorable action under Article 8. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wagoner. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Carl Wagner, Precinct 11. I move that we terminate debate on the question and all associated matters. A motion to terminate debate on the article. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion is a two-third vote. We have, of course, a recommended vote of the Finance Committee for $200,000. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion is a positive vote. That disposes of Article 8. Now we have Article 9, which, sir. <clears throat> Harry McKay, Precinct 21. I have a substitute motion for Article 9. Okay. I move that we act favorably on Article 9, a simple motion. That's what, that's what you asked for, a simple motion. I move that we vote favorably on Article 9, and I'd appreciate a second. There is a positive vote on this Board of Selectmen have recommended a positive vote. Are you endorsing theirs? I, I'm not sure what we, we're voting on there. All right, whatever. Um, this, the, I think the Selectmen have the main motion because it's not a spending article. It's a, um, asking us to establish a fund. Okay. I'm not going to take a lot of time to repeat what I just said, but it seems to me the creation of a new fund at this time is premature. Let's give this a year to see how this worked out. Let's get a couple of other groups within the town involved in the process, be it the Capital Budget Committee or such, uh, and I recommend a no action vote on this, uh, on this article. Thank you. Well, did you get on the list, Mr. McKay? But the, Mr. McKay, you know, there is a positive vote action by the Board of Selectmen on this. You all, Mr. McCabe, I'm not sure what your motion is. Is it in substitute for, is it in substitute? 
Can I finish? Mr. McCabe, is it a substitute of the selectman's main motion, which is recommending we establish a fund? My motion is a substitute motion for Article 9 in the special town meeting that we vote favorably on Article 9. My understanding is it was favorable. That's an endorsement of the selectman's motion, sir. I, I'm not talking about the selectman's motion. I'm talking about Put it in writing, please. a recommendation under Article 9. And Put it in writing, please. my understanding that uh, the motion is in order. I haven't heard Mr. McCabe, say it wasn't. please put it in writing, bring it up forth so I know what you're having us vote on. You said you would accept simple motions. How simple can you get? I have to read it. Ms. LaCourt, you're next. I have to read your motion, Mr. McCabe. I have you, Mr. Peluso. Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. So, um, Again, I'm not sure who to direct the question to, Mr. Moderator, yep. but I would like to talk a little bit about how we might account for uh, the rebates that we receive without actually creating this fund and whether or not it would be possible to then set a policy about what percentage of those rebates might, by rule of thumb, be reinvested in further energy efficiency efforts. Why don't you tell us what your thoughts are and then we'll... Well, I guess my first question would be to the, our esteemed comptroller as to whether or not we're able to tag each of these transactions as it arrives as a cash rebate, as having been an energy rebate, so we can add them all up at the end of the year. Yeah, no, Ruth, you have to come forward and introduce yourself. Yeah. Although. Ruth Lewis, comptroller. Um, chapter 44, Section 53 says any revenue received by the town goes into the general fund of the town unless it's a specific law that says otherwise. Yes, but we don't have any way to further identify those transactions as having been received, like, uh, well, like what their source was. Their source was a energy rebate. It would, well, the energy rebate would just be local receipts unless we had the special fund but it would have to be special legislation. We don't, we don't have like a second field on the record where we can just identify where it came from or that it's got another category? Well, we would have a special revenue account so we could account for it, yes, in the general okay, fund. Okay, that's yes. what I'm asking you. Yeah. So in our chart of accounts, we could just oh, yes. so we segregate could say them so how we much would we be able to say this year. is mm -hmm. excellent. And then to the chair of the finance committee, uh, my request is um, were the seed money that we just voted to be successful and were we to be able to track the percentage of rebates we were getting, would it be something the Finance Committee would consider, in, given that you voted not to do this fund, that you would consider having a rule of thumb sort of similar to other rules of thumb that we have that says that we'll reinvest a certain percentage of these rebates in energy efficiency projects that are going through the capital plan? To asking what their future mm -hmm. policy is going to be? I'm asking them whether this is what he has in mind when he says we don't need another special fund. Mr. Tosti? Uh, I really can't start setting policy for something that hasn't come before the full finance committee. Uh, the finance committee's position is we want to mm -hmm. wait, um, see how, the, how it's created, see how much rebates are coming in, see how we can make this mm -hmm. a fund uh, which takes in other <coughs> players within it, what can go to the capital budget mm -hmm. process, what can mm -hmm. go differently. So um, I can't really answer mm -hmm. if we do this, we'll do that. Uh, somebody will have to put together a whole package, put it in the okay. warrant, come back to us, and we'll consider it. But we're always open-minded and considering. We're, we're just getting this uh, sort of fear in the back of our mind that more and more mm -hmm. money uh, gets tracked away from the general fund uh, that comes before you in the budgets. That's why we're not ready at this point to go in this direction. Okay. So um, I'm going to actually recommend that you support the Finance Committee's motion on this because I think that it's possible for us to achieve what we want to achieve here, which is to have funds to reinvest in these kind of energy efficiency projects without having a special segregated fund, it's unclear to me, and perhaps that's another question to either the finance committee or the town manager, how we would move funds out of said specially created fund or all the rebates to go in there, should we need the money for some other purpose or want to add it to free cash 
or whatever, uh, we may or may not want to reinvest all of these rebates. They look like they're pretty substantial to me in future projects. And um, I'm trying to retain flexibility here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Carmen. Thank you, Mr. Moder. Dean Carmen, Precinct 20, and a member of the Finance Committee. Um, I would ask everybody, I would ask you to vote no action on this article. I think, at least through my thinking, I'll walk you through my thinking when I heard these two articles at the Finance Committee and how it worked out for me. To me, voting yes on Article 15, on Article 8 and voting no on Article 9 became a reasoned compromise. On one side, you have, you know, we'll even look at town meeting. We have Mr. Foskett, Mr. Loretti, and others who spoke and said, you know, this really isn't um, a good idea for the town because it moves appropriating funds out of established policy. It takes money away from the general fund, and we don't really get to track it. The town manager's position when he came before the Finance Committee was that there were some, you know, opportunistic um, expenditures that he could make with this money, like he said, that would save the town money over the long term. And so what voting yes on eight and voting no on nine does is it gives him $200,000 in a one-time opportunity to actually prove that, whether he spends money over a year or two or three or four, he has an opportunity to prove it. Now, look, $200,000 is real money to me. I'm sure it's real money to most everyone here. I'm not taking that as a light amount, but when it's $200,000 one time, you can sort of sit here and say, all right, I can justify it in my head in the context of a large hundred and something million dollar budget. When it comes to establishing a fund for something that hasn't been proven and having the money sort of go into this fund and we don't know how the results were, or there is no accountability for the results to move on to a longer term project, that's, that's sort of where I had the, the, the trouble buying into it. So, I would ask you to vote no action on this article. You know, sort of like a lot of the speakers said before, it's not voting against energy efficiency in this case. It's just voting to, to get some more evidence and some proof that this works. And then if it does, two, three years from now, we can vote for it again. We can vote for it or we could not vote for it. Thank you. Mr. Peluso. Ted Peluso from uh, Precinct 6, I guess. Uh, very interesting to listen to this discussion. And I'll summarize it very simply. It's a matter of trust. It sounds like the capital projects, which we approve for four, five, nine million dollars, very few questions asked. The questions that we answered, nothing change a thing, right? So now we got a brand new town manager. We're paying him two hundred thousand dollars. Hundred fifty something. It. We're paying him one hundred and seventy-five plus some fringe benefits, etc. Right? Now this town manager says. I would like to create a fund. And you know what? I think we ought to support him. And the reason I think we ought to support him is very simple. By what stretch of the imagination does anybody in this room believe that the Finance Committee, the Capital Projects Planning Committee, the town meeting is any more qualified to determine how the money is being spent than the energy working group. So to me, it's a control issue. It's a trust issue and a control issue. And you know, there's a hell of a lot of control in this town. And if you don't trust this guy to run a $200,000 uh, revolving fund, my God, you're giving him about $60 million to run? So I urge you to trust the town manager. It's that simple. 
Mr. Oster. I'm Adam Oster at Precinct 3, uh, and I don't just um, live in Arlington. I get to work here, and I work for an energy consulting company that has been uh, instrumental in a lot of policy decisions over the years related to energy efficiency programs, uh, the ones that are done by utilities. Uh, our clients are mostly uh, consumer advocates and attorneys general uh, in, in the different states. And uh, energy efficiency has a reputation as being sort of an insanely great deal. Uh, we say that it's not, it's better than a free lunch, it's a lunch they pay you to eat. And with these kind of numbers, you can see why that is. And un unfortunately, um, very often, uh, when legislators or regulators set up these programs, uh, because they're being cautious, they cap them, and there is a lot of, of lost opportunity as a result uh, because there is a lot of cost-effective energy efficiency investment, which means stuff that would save you more money than it costs, that has to be foregone because there's a cap on the amount that can be done. My question about this article in particular uh, is, um, I, I was looking at the numbers for the rebates. Uh, it looks like it's around maybe a third of the costs, and so maybe between sixty and eighty thousand dollars on that two hundred thousand dollars that we just voted. Uh, if we don't authorize this, so that these rebates are not available for this purpose uh, in the next year, is that going to cause a problem? Uh, if you had known that we wouldn't authorize it, supposing that we don't, would you have asked for more money? Is that Jack a clear Lane. question? Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Um, I, I wouldn't have requested a larger sum of money. I would just answer that it, it poses a challenge when, when rebates cannot be utilized to pay for the project, it, creates, uh, it can create a funding problem. Uh, in, in the example of those variable speed drives. Um, well, I'll take a step back. Uh, some vendors on larger projects are willing to accept the rebate themselves for the implementation of the project. And if a vendor was willing to do that, the town would pay their share less the rebate to the vendor with whatever existing appropriation for whatever project it was. However, if the vendor on a, on a smaller project, or, or I guess any project wasn't willing to put that sort of money on the line uh, on their part, uh, it, it can create uh, a challenge in terms of having town funds available with that rebate going directly into the general fund and not being able to reimburse the expense account. So it, it, the, the amount of money that town meeting just approved will certainly allow us to do um, many of the things we have in our energy reduction plan, uh, but the utilization of this energy conservation fund will remove some of the challenges of utilizing the rebates to their highest use. Thank you. I, I guess I would just say uh, that my, cons I mean, one of my concerns is that we not let any opportunities go by that are this good. Um, and we're starting to develop a track record and some experience with this stuff. We saw some of the reports tonight. I assume after a year more under our belt with this money, we'll have a lot more opportunity to judge. And I would just say that, that I hope that uh, the town will not be shy in requesting additional funds uh, if they're needed, um, because um, otherwise, you know, we lose. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Scott Smith, Precinct 5, move the question. I would all issues. And all issues, okay, thank you. We have a motion to terminate debate. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion, it's a two-thirds vote. Okay. Um, Mr. McCabe, did you put your motion in writing? Okay. Um, well, so you just, your motion basically is you want favorable action on this. I mean, you made a motion. I, I have to know what you want us to vote on. My motion is that we vote favorably on Article 9 
in the special town meeting warrant. How simple can it be? It was seconded, and to the best of my knowledge, you did not rule it out of order. I'm about so to rule please, it out of order. Let's vote. I've never seen so much nitpicking in 51 years. It's, it's terrible. Shh. I'm about to rule it out of order because I think it's in supplement to the main motion of the selectmen and not necessary. So I've ruled Mr. McCabe's motion out of order. Uh, we have before us a recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. In my opinion, it's a negative vote. Okay. More than five people have arisen. Um, all in favor of the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen, please rise. Same tellers. Um, Mr. Dunn, can you count up front? Five up front. Mr. Schlickman? Twelve. Twelve to my left. Mr. O'Connor? Fourteen. Fourteen. Left center, right center, Mr. Trembley? Seventeen. Seventeen. Mr. McCabe? Nineteen. Nineteen. All opposed, please rise. Mr. Dunn? Five. Five. Oh, they canceled each other out. Mr. Schlickman? Nineteen. Mr. O'Connor? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Mr. Trembley? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Mr. McCabe? Twelve. Twelve. The vote is in the negative, 67 for 86 against. It's a negative vote. No fund. That closes Article 9 of the special, brings us to Article 10. Bylaw Amendment Rubbish Trash Collection. With the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Greeley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> Currently, there is a bylaw related to how early you can put your trash out. <clears throat> it is uh, 6 p.m. the night before collection. There is, however, no bylaw in terms of how long uh, you can leave trash out after the day of collection. A uh, number of instances this year of uh, trash being left out, for example, recy recyclables, uh, the leaf bags, for example, a number of different complaints from neighbors about how long they were left out. But uh, best to speak on this through you, Mr. Moderator, with your permission, please. I'd like to call on uh, our Director of Public Works, uh, Mr. Rademacher, to uh, further explain the new trash contract and this Warren article related to this. Okay. Mr. Rademacher. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, uh, Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, it is true that we do now do not have a um, bylaw that, allow, that re it allows us enforcement for having trash removed from the curb if it's not collected. A and the, the best example there uh, recently was the uh, leaf bags left after our last yard waste collection. Uh, but the trash contract we're about to enter into beginning uh, July 1st is going to have some components which also will have an impact uh, that would require or, or be beneficial to have this same bylaw change. Um, there are three components that are most closely related to the, the request to have this change to the bylaw, and that would be enforcement of the town's mandatory recycling, uh, a weekly recycling pickup, and uh, waste limits that will be part of the new uh, trash contract. Um, recycling enforcement is something that the town has uh, wanted to do for some time, uh, but did not have staff to do so. Uh, state law requires that many items are, ban are banned from the waste stream. These are recyclable materials, construction debris, uh, automobile tires, and the such. And if our trash vendor brings uh, waste to uh, the incinerator or the receiving facility, and it is determined that there is too many of these materials 
in the waste stream, that trash can be um, rejected, turned away from the facility. Uh, that vendor is now in a position where they have no place to bring this, this waste. Uh, once they learn that lesson, they then would be more diligent in looking at waste on the curb for pickup. And then they have the ability to reject waste on their own if it is determined that there is an excess amount of waistband items within the trash stream. So having a recycling enforcement gets us more proactive in this, uh, in this sense where we don't get to the point where we're being forced into trying to deal with the situation, but uh, heading it, heading it head on, uh, facing it head on. And this new trash contract that we're about to enter into, the, the vendor has offered to become our enforcement officer. Um, and the current proposal for enforcement would be to leave trash on the curb if recycling efforts aren't seen to be occurring at the household. Now, in order to make this uh, a more easy transition for folks for this mandatory recycling, we wanted to up recycling to weekly collection. And when we put out our RFP to get bids for the waste contract, we asked pricing, pricing to come back both for the status quo and with the weekly recycling option. And um, prices we got ranged from $250,000 to upwards of $800,000 additional to have weekly recycling. One vendor came with the option that if we were to impose waste limits, uh, a limit on the amount of solid waste people could place on the curb, they could lower their proposal to us and bring actually the proposed costs in line or less than the cost we currently pay to not have weekly recycling. Now the thought process behind that is if the vendor knows how much waste they might pick up in a given week, if they know if it's limited to a certain amount, they can then uh, program their time and their um, facility uh, to allow for additional uh, recycling truck to be on the street. They know what their limit is going to be on waste pickup, and then they know they have the uh, additional um, uh, workforce to pick up our recycling on a weekly basis. So the enforcement for that waste limit would also be that trash above, the, above that limit would also be left on the curb. So what we didn't want was a situation where um, waste was left on a curb, either in the case of mandatory recycling or waste ban uh, limits, and not have the ability to enforce that waste to be brought back off the curb uh, so that it doesn't become a public nuisance. We want it to be off the curb, either brought back out the following week or disposed of properly uh, you know, for other, with other means. The state has offered us to, uh, the state is now offering grants for uh, recycling enforcers, but they are requiring that monetary fines be placed for people who violate mandatory recycling, and we felt that this policy of leaving waste uh, would be a little bit more uh, sensitive to the residents of Arlington. We, al <coughs> excuse me. we also are proposing to phase this new program in over the course of uh, one or uh, two months and educate folks on uh, violations as they occur. So July 1st, we're not going to just start to uh, enforce these violations, but instead leave stickers or some kind of notification saying you're in violation of the town's new bylaw or the, and the, uh, the town's new trash policies. And in the coming weeks, we would not be collecting this trash. Uh, I guess that's pretty much the explanation of why we're looking for this, um, this change to the bylaw. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Phelps? Judith Phelps, Precinct 16. I have a problem with this in the sense that in the past, there have been times when people have put out rubbish that was not picked up. There was like a whole street that maybe was missed by the rubbish collectors. People have been told in town 
that if your trash isn't picked up, that they were able to call either the DPW or the trash collector themselves. They had a number that they could call and that they would then pick it up the next day. Is this policy no longer going to be available for town people? Mr. Ademacher? Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. If trash is missed on a street due to either the fault of the town or the vendor, we would not uh, hold this new um, violation in place for that location. We would send a truck back out and collect the trash. So then if the people haven't removed the trash by 9 o'clock, are they then um, in violation? No, we would not hold those uh, locations in violation. So why isn't it made that if you leave a notice of violation that it's banned material, then it has to be moved at 9 o'clock? If there's no removal, no notice made, then the people can leave it out there and call to have it removed the next day. I'm not sure I understand. In other words, if I put my rubbish out and it wasn't picked up because it was banned material, I would expect that by 9 o'clock I'd have to bring it back in, go through it, sort it out, and leave only stuff that wasn't banned the following week. However, if they miss mine, I don't want to have to pull it in at 9 o'clock, call the next morning, and then have to, again, take, take it back to the street the next day for them to come and pick it up. You wouldn't have to. I, I apologize if I wasn't clear. If, uh, if at, because of the fault of the town or the vendor we missed a street or a section of town, we would not require the trash to be pulled in and then put back out. We would simply uh, send a trash truck out to collect that trash the following day. Then this bylaw, this bylaw would make that person in violation of the bylaw. Uh, the bylaw is written that your, tr your trash has to be pulled in the day uh, that you're uh, appointed for collection. If we, would had to if we had to delay that day once because of the fault of the town or the vendor, the, the following day would essentially become the de facto day that would be the collection day. Um, Scott Smith. Scott Smith, Precinct 5. I'm going to offer a simple amendment. If Mr. Good, throw that uh, word file I sent to on the screen. Um, they basically it addresses Ms. Phelps' concerns. I had the same concern thinking back to January a year ago when, you know, for understandably, trash pickup was sometimes delayed and the trucks couldn't get down the street due to snow. Uh, had some back and forth with Mr. Rademacher, and I was convinced it was not, not the intent. Uh, but I will offer, you know, uh, Scott Smith, uh, STM Article 10, some doc, doc file. Yeah, scroll up, please. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, but it sounds like this amendment might be, might be necessary and might make people more comfortable, so I offer it. Basically, it adds the words, unless it can be reasonably expected that pickup will occur on the following day, uh, is, then any uncollected rubbish must be removed by 9 p.m. Uh, this is designed to cover the case where, you know, the pickup doesn't happen that day for whatever reason. You call them up and they say, leave it out, we'll get to it tomorrow. It's designed just to cover that case. And I support uh, both the original motion and my amendment. Thank you. Second. Okay, it's, the motion has been seconded. Um, Mr. Streifeld. Mark Streifeld, Precinct 20. Um, <clears throat> I am concerned about this article, and I think I'm probably going to be voting against it. I understand the intent of it. I think the intent of it is very good. But the way it is done, um, what I know about myself is I'm very often not home by 9 o'clock on the day that trash is due to be picked up. And I worry about any type of town bylaw which will routinely put people, um, well, put people in the state where they're violating the bylaw. Um, I don't know what the correct solution is, but uh, this 
is not what I will be voting for. Um, now, l listening to the remarks from the Director of Public Works, I got the impression there were, a, he, he mentioned that there are conditions under which trash will not be collected if there's too much trash or it doesn't look like there's enough recycling. Is that what I understood was said? I think what he said is if you're not recycling, they're not going to pick it up. If there's no recycling bins in front of your house and it's recycling day, your trash is staying on the curb. Is that basically it, Mr. Ademacher? Yeah. That's, that's what he told us. Mr. Mottermark, could clarify if I got it wrong. <coughs> Mike Rademacher, Public Works Director. That is correct. The, um, po the, the policy we are looking at is a mandatory recycling enforcement. Uh, so with the weekly recycling, there should be uh, recycling, uh, evidence of recycling on a weekly basis with the trash. And if there isn't, then we would, uh, we would leave the trash at the curb. Is it conceivable that somebody wouldn't have any recyclables for some reason during a given period? Uh, we did consider that, and we, not to say there isn't that situation, and we could, if there is a hardship or if there is a case by case we need to look at, but we had some difficulty thinking of uh, an instance where there would not be any recycling materials created in a one week period junk mail, milk cartons, so forth. I see. Mr. Chappett, you want to be on the list? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Roland Chappett, Precinct 12. There's a part of this project that confuses me a little bit, and let me give you a story. And to back up why I, I'll support the bylaw, but I need some clarity, and that has to do with leaf pickup. Now, if I understand it correctly right now, every week leaves are picked up. Is that correct? Uh, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Currently, during the season where yard waste is picked up, uh, it is picked up every other week to concur with recycling pickup. Under this new contract, we actually will have weekly yard waste pickup during that uh, season. So leaf pickup right now is the same week as recycle pickup? Correct, during, during the season, yes. Okay, I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> um, a quick story. A couple of weeks ago, the Prince Robbins Farm sponsored a cleanup up on, on the farm. We did a great job. And, there were about 25 people up there. We got a lot done. In one corner, back of my house, they collected leaves and put them in leaf bags, which we supplied. And I told Mike, the guys came Monday morning and they didn't pick them up. I thought they might not have seen them because there was a lot of other brush and so forth, which they did get. And so I said, I'll, I'll just put them out in the front of my house and when the truck comes by, they'll get them. Turned out there was a dozen bags, not six. So that was six trips in my wheelbarrow to go from the back of the park up to the street. Okay, no problem, except that they're still there. Now I thought, and I'm wrong about this, that they would be picking up leaves every single week. And so when I put them out on Thursday morning, they should have been gone that afternoon. I'm wrong. What you're saying to me now is if this passes, that would have occurred. They would have picked them up every single week. No, no. We're confusing what our future contract for That's a what I'm saying. waste contract is going to be and the simple bylaw amendment before us. The waste contractor in the future, which he's going to tell us about during the budgets, may pick up every week if that's the one he contracts with. What we're talking about is this bylaw amendment. So if you don't bring you your trash in, you're going to get a fine. Put away it now. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. But he's you hoping know, I'm not we going get that out there new contract. And, I'm not about to go out there and wheelbarrow another dozen leaf bags back to the back of my yard just because we didn't get them picked up. So my concern was, will I ever have to worry about this problem again? If we get the new contract that picks up weekly, no. Correct? Correct. All right, then I'll support this. Okay. It's 11.05. Okay. 
Do we have any, mo any um, notices of reconsideration? Mr. Tosti served notice of reconsideration of Article 41 and under the special 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. All in favor of adjourning, please say yes. yes. Opposed? No. We have to adjourn the annual. No, I think, uh, yeah, all in favor of adjourning the annual town meeting, please say yes. yes. Opposed? All right, we'll bet we're going to finish with number 10 next week and then go back to the annual. Al Tosti served. You want 41? Do you want it? You, all right, Mr. Harrington is serving reconsideration of 41 as well.